Yo, what's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday, October 2nd. Uh, spooky season for my horror fans out there. You know, I've got a little smile product uh, placement here. But no, what's going on, everyone? Happy Sunday, October 2nd. We are here with our Atlanta discussions, uh, which I have been loving. Sundays are my favorite day of the week, by the way, from House of the Dragon to adding this to the, to the agenda. This has just been, these are my favorite days of the week, y'all. And I hope it's the same for you all uh, as far as getting together and talking about these shows and to Today, we are here talking about Atlanta, episode four, which was titled Light Skinned. And again, if you've got an opportunity to see my review, um, I said in that review, and I still stand by because I've seen the episode a couple times now, uh, e easily one of my top tier Atlanta episodes um, as far as favorite of the season so far. And it is in my, I would say, top, top five, uh, maybe top 10. I got to re rearrange, look at my list a little bit more, and, I, and that might actually be a video that we make in the future as far as my favorite Atlanta episodes, but this is definitely up there, y'all. This is definitely up there. What a fantastic episode, and I'm so excited to be here with you all talking about this episode in today's live spoiler discussion. Uh, we got some guests that's going to be joining me here in a little bit, but in the meantime, let me say what's up to everyone in the chat. We got some Team Willie fans in the building. Oh, we'll talk about Uncle Willie, <clears throat> a.k.a. Alligator Man, a little bit later. Uh, Team Gloria's. We got Meg in the building. We got Ray saying what's up. We got my guest who's going to be uh, actually joining us here in a second, uh, who is repping Team Willie. We got uh, people saying what's up to each other. So, yeah, this is going to be a, this is easy. Yeah, a top three. Top, I think it's a top I gotta, I gotta look at that list again, man. It's definitely in the top tier for me. But uh, let me, uh, before we get into the discussion and bring my guests in again, I appreciate you all joining us on these Sundays. Again, these are my favorite days of the week from this show and House of Dragons. Uh, but what makes it so much fun is interacting with you all. So do me a favor, hit that thumbs up, hit that share button, and uh, hit the likes, all that fun stuff. Leave your thoughts in the comments, of course. And if you could do the same on the replay, much appreciated. With that being said, I'm so happy to bring back a guest that we had a couple weeks ago. Very excited to catch up with her, see what she thought of this episode, and uh, break it all down with you all. I'm talking about the one and only L. What's going on, L? How are we doing today? Hi. Happy Sunday. How are you today? I'm doing good, L. Like I was saying up top, it's Sunday. It's, uh, yeah. you know, we're talking about this show, and then later on, we got some House of the Dragon. So it's, it's my favorite day of the week, L. It is me my favorite too. day of the week. So yeah. excited. So excited. It gets, well, me, it gets yeah. me remembering that preparing for work is not the only thing Sundays are for. You know exactly, what I mean? Exactly, so exactly. Take take my mind off the rat race. It's good. 100%, 100%. Well, oh, again, I know this is your um, second time being on Atlanta After Show. And if this is uh, the person's first time watching you on the show, why don't you introduce yourself and let them know who you are, where they can find your awesome content. Cool, cool, cool. Hey, everybody. My name is LB. My YouTube channel is Watch With Me LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny ranch reviews and recaps on my favorite movies and TV shows. Um, I've been on YouTube for about a year now. So much fun. Love connecting with folks like E and, you know, maybe some folks who are going to be on today I might have connected with before, but it's been great to build community. So if you like to laugh and you like movies and TV shows and my mama's calling me, of course, um, please subscribe to my channel um, and, you know, we can have fun over there doing all the movie recaps and reviews. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, it's funny you say your mom was calling because it's perfect timing, right? Because that type right, of episode right. is a family <laughs> episode. So, uh, yeah, guys, as you all heard from Elle, I mean, the content's always fire. I'm so glad I came across her uh, about a month ago now. Uh, and we've talked House of the Dragon. We're now talking Atlanta. So, guys, don't don't uh, don't miss out on Elle's content. It's always fire stuff. So definitely check her out. Her links and everything will be in the description of this video once we wrap things up. But Elle, before we get into this fourth episode, um, you know, I, I talked to you last episode one and two what did you think about episode three which was the um what was episode three? Oh man it's all starting to blend together now um what was episode three episode three episode three it's it was an earned episode oh it was the uh al grammys yma d'angelo experience what did you oh think yeah that yeah 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 it was very atlanta <laughs> it was very atlanta very weird very much what you um think of in terms of you not knowing is this real? You know, what, what's going on? Is there a deeper meaning behind it? Right, um, right. I, I personally was, I would have loved if the actual D'Angelo would have popped up in that room, <laughs> I would have died. That would have been so, so clutch because I used to love the, and I still love D'Angelo, but you know, yeah. he's one of them folks that 
you never see. It's like you concerned, mm. like if they, like you got to do a wellness check on them, like because you never know where they are. So, but right. I thought it was a great episode, very much Atlanta, and I love the episodes with Brian Tyree Henry because I really love his um, style. I think he's just a really great actor, and I, I heard he's a yeah. cool guy, so that always makes things yeah. better for me to uh, you know like to get behind and support an actor when they're actually. Mm-hmm not a trash person you know right right as he was trying to find him a a yma which he did which uh you know r.i.p to yodel kid you know never forget the the young die early they say right die young uh but moving on to this fourth episode before we really dive deep into it just general impressions of episode four light skin it like i said for me it's 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 top tier atlanta a lot of people in the comments agree with that do you agree with that or was it an episode that maybe didn't work for you Nah, it was top tier. It was yeah. it was up there for me. It was just it felt um <clears throat> it felt funny and it felt like, you know, I don't know, it just felt like a good it was it was funny as hell. I I, I yeah. really enjoyed it. And then I <laughs> I love how Atlanta will just bring people back up. Like you would never see, mm-hmm. like I don't I don't know when the last time we saw his dad. It mm-hmm. might have been like season one or two, or I don't know, it was it was early on. Um, but I love the um actor Isaiah Whitlock Jr. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he's a great actor. And I loved um, you know, that whole scene with the mall. Because when I tell you I do my if if I go to a mall, which is very, very infrequent, I'm going yes. early in the morning. I'm right. not gonna be in that right, right. room to run around yep. people acting crazy and I gotta bop somebody in their nose, right? So I just really related to that. And it was so many funny parts that you know are just so relatable, which is where I think Atlanta shines, and that it's yep. so so relatable on so many different levels Mm -hmm. um and you know two thumbs up for me that was it was definitely top like 10 for sure 10 to maybe even top five for me yeah it's definitely i'm going back and forth like i was saying i might make like a video on that like top 10 atlanta episodes for me once the season ends but it's definitely up there uh i think you know what me and you when you do your um when you do your less ranked, the uh, you know Marvel or less ranked the uh, top scary movie, we always usually agree. We on the same. We page? always one or two off usually. So yeah, I would yeah. love to see that to see how we rank those Atlanta episodes. That would be cool. Hey, let's put let's put it in the books. Let's let's yeah. let's talk. let's have our people talk to our peoples, and exactly. we, we, gotta get, we gotta get that list going. Exactly. We'll definitely get that going. But one of the key words you said, L, was. Now, Atlanta's always been relatable. You know, obviously, it's through the black lens. And I lived in Atlanta for a little bit. But I think it's this episode, universally speaking, I think everyone can can mess with this episode. I mean, yeah. I'm talking black, white, Puerto Rican, Asian, you name it. Family drama is something that we've all, maybe not to the extent of this episode, kidnapping fathers and whatnot and, and all that fun shenanigans. But definitely a lot of to relate to with moms and sisters and, and granddads and going to... L, when they, I haven't been to church in years, I, I will admit, me but it brought me back. It brought me back sitting it's there, three-hour sermons and the praise dancing and and communions and Holy Ghost and and all yeah, that stuff. Man. I was I was it was a nostalgia episode for me for so many le- nostalgia for the sense that it reminded me so much of the first few seasons of Atlanta uh, mm-hmm. and nostalgia for my own personal life living through a lot of these uh, moments that we got in this episode, which just made it even more better when you can yeah. relate to it. Agree, agree. And you know, I'm I haven't been to church in years either. Yeah. Um <clears throat> stop going. I guess when I became an adult, you know, Same here. you have yep. the option because you didn't have an option as a child. You was getting up and you was going you to know church. it too, right? Like that's just what it is. <laughs> um, so I haven't been in, in a long time. And you know, and and you know, in, in um New Orleans, we have a very large black Catholic population, mm. and so I'm Catholic. Okay. Um, but the Catholic church in new orleans is very much um it has the feel of a baptist or koji okay. church gotcha. in terms of like the choir and the drums right. and the, right. you know that whole piece um but we also used to go to baptist church um mm-hmm. because they mm-hmm. had a lot of famous preachers that we you know my mama was going like celebrities going out there. To. like you're right. gonna go sit over there with the other kids and you're gonna behave yourself and that's just gonna be it but yep. Yep. um you know and i can't wait to get into that scene where they were in the car on the way to church, that thing took me down. Oh, when I tell you here, I don't know how many times I have been offered a cough drop or this a peppermint thing. or uh, any kind of little candy. Be like, that's gonna. F- oh yeah, I'm gonna <laughs> give me one or two of those. That's gonna be. I'm gonna be good for next week. What is y'all talking about? I mean, L. I don't know more. what. Like what? And it, for me, it was either a peppermint or yep. you remember them little strawberry candies. It was like a little. 
hard candy and it was red and it was yes, wrapped up yes. like um, a strawberry and the geez. top of the wrapper was green about. and it was yep. it was sweet. It was a very tasty candy. Right. But I haven't had breakfast. Like, fine. Right. Like, what you think the candy is supposed to do for me? Like, you told yeah. me the kitchen was closed last night at 8 o'clock and I ain't had right. no breakfast. We gotta go to bed. We gotta go to church and go and then Don't when we go to Shawnee yeah, yeah, yeah. or, you know, the place after church, it's going to be packed. I got to wait till one o'clock to eat. And that candy exactly. is supposed exactly. to do something for me. Not at all. Hold on. I think I might. Is this what you're talking about here? Let me share the screen right quick. Yeah. Um, let's see. The, That's the, the one right here. Yep. That's the ones. Yeah. Yes. They were good, too. That's like you it. said, they were good. They but were very good. Yes. I see those cream savers. Mm -hmm. Those cream savers were slapped, too, though. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The cream savers were very good. But you know what I used to hate, though? I hate it like if somebody gave me something and it tastes like a purse. You ever oh, had that happen? Yes. It's like like it tastes like you know? perfume and like yep. just exactly. flavors that are not appealing. So then that would defeat <sighs> the purpose anyway. Yep. Hell, this Terrible. this is like I said, it's a throwback. This is a throwback. Yeah. But you had <laughs> mentioned uh last time we saw these characters, I'm referring to uh Uncle Riley and uh Auntie uh Gloria. So for Uncle Riley, Isaiah, we haven't seen this man since episode one, right. season one. L it's been since season one, episode one. Right. Uh Isaiah Bradley, I'll always I'm a big uh wires fan, and I've always been a fan of the yeah. wire. He's also collaborated with um you know, Spike Lee, but oh, I think we missed out on one of these opportunities in this episode. Yeah, I took it easy. I was hoping for one of those. Al. I was hoping for one of those, especially he, he was in that the mall. That would have been so clutch, man. Oh, that would have been perfect. Uh, but it was great to see him. And then also, we haven't seen, you know, uh, Gloria since episode two, uh, season two, I'm sorry, season two, episode 10, which was the FUBU episode, which is easily in my top five. That was yeah. one of that FUBU episode. Yeah. Uh, was hilarious, but also very, very sad and dark when the kid, you know, yeah. took his life because they was poking fun of him. So it's been a while, Elle, to say the least. And yeah. I love seeing these characters back, especially when we talk about this man right here, Uncle Willie, who That's we'll get one, into yeah. a little bit, a little bit later. I mean, <laughs> Elle, I'm telling you, you can't kidnap your own dad because you mathematically can't. it just doesn't it has kid in it. Ain't so, no I mean, kids there. Yeah. Ain't no so. kids to nap. That's what it is. <laughs> Man, so many moments. Let's just jump right into it, L. As we we open up the episode again, we we see Earn. Once he was sitting on that balcony on that porch, I'm like, oh yeah, he's back home. And you know, yep. mama coming out, daddy walking out. It also, you know, I mentioned in my review that the reason why I thought Earn was waiting outside is because last time we saw him at his house, they wouldn't let him in because they, they said he, you know, he's always asking for money, right? Yeah. Uh, but the tables have changed, right? He's obviously now more. Uh, you know, he has a job, he has financing, but he's, you know, yeah. he's still waiting outside. But the thing, L, and I don't know if you can relate to this as far as being around the parents, the moms, the dads, or whatnot. And, uh, you know, you're grown, you do your grown folk thing out here. Like, oh, come on, mom, we'll go ahead and take my car. Nah, I'm good, baby. We'll go ahead and drive. Cause, uh, right. you know, they always see you as that 16, 15, however old still. you were. Right. They don't, mm -hmm. yeah, I, I'll go ahead and drive. And I don't want you right. playing your loud music. I, I, we'll go ahead and take my view. You're going to drive too fast. Back. You're not going to stop exactly. at the yellow light. You're going to go past the yellow light. It's just, and, and part of me, a lot of times, would rather y'all drive. Just go ahead exactly. and drive. Because if you're going to backseat drive, yep. that's going to make my nerves bad. And it's going to upset me and my homegirls. It's going to be and too much. You, and you know it's going to take you about three hours to get to Listen. a Tibbet destination. Because they always go like 10, 20 minutes, 20 miles under. We're going to stop actual, at yeah. every yellow light. Yep. We're going to take an extra 10 seconds at every stop sign. It's unnecessary. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I feel like I'm probably going to be like that when I get older, too. Yeah, me too. You know, so <laughs> we can't avoid that. Exactly. Exactly. But again, just seeing them, I already knew we was going to get into something special. Because I think for me, L, it's kind of great. to, And we've always talked about Atlanta. I love these characters, but I love when we get to learn more about the characters, see where they yeah. come from. I, I need that Darius-centric episode where we find out who his mom, his dad. I know they're, I think it's the, they're still in Nigeria, but I would love to see a Darius family member. That would be so Cousin, crazy. uncle, brother, sister, something. I need it. Yeah. But um, seeing this extended family, L, does, does any of the mannerisms, decisions from the family does it kind of correlate to why Earn and Al the way they are, especially with uh, Earn's mom kind of being petty at points? Can we see where he got that from? Now you know I don't want to. I don't want a social work. Sorry, hold on. Oh, my groceries. I'm sorry. No worries. No like... worries. I got my little dog. Hey, I know that. I know it. My dog be on everything. But we're gonna wait till El gets back here. But I'm gonna. Uh, I want to know in the chat, guys, have you guys ever been offered a peppermint 
or um, you know, what we got in this episode, a cough drop. Let me know in the chat. And while we wait for L to get back, let me catch up to some of these comments here because I know y'all are uh dropping some gems in here. Let's see, let's see. Uh let's rank Teddy Perkins. Yeah, well, like I said, Bucky, one day, as L said earlier, we might make a video with that, uh, sharing our top 10 episodes, of course, once the season ends, because we might have another fantastic classic episode in the future a standalone van episode. yeah i saw that literally before we went live uh aaron i saw the trailer for episode five uh and it looks like it's uh van is is on a sitcom and it looks like some tyler perry stuff going on there but uh we got you back i was i forgot Sorry. the question i was asking oh no you're good you're good uh was the, yes the uh the connection to earn and his family can you can you see where he got some of his pettiness from oh yeah episode? yeah i was getting ready to say i don't want to social work y'all again because i went in on my bag last oh, no, time bring it therapy. back we love that yes but, we love but it. i could kind of see why if his mom is you know always like very critical of him i could see mm -hmm. why Earn would kind of be like aloof and just like not very expressive or not, you know, really communicative because maybe if he was, then his mom would have been like, you know, kind of looking at him or saying something crazy because, oh, babe, I haven't seen in a long time. I'm glad you changed your hair. You look crazy last time I saw you. I'm mm -hmm. glad you did something different with yourself. Now you don't look as crazy. You know, that was like the first thing that she said to him. But, you know, I could tell that, you know, they love him. And yep. that they support him, but I can kind of see why his personality might be the way that it is. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, I saw I saw a lot of that, and I you know I think didn't Darius's mom? I mean, not Darius. Um, Al's mom die, right? Yeah, Lord. Um, we we still haven't gotten the full details the full of story, it. Story, right? Been very vague, but uh, and I, I'd imagine we'll probably get a. a, a arc on that but yeah she did yeah, pass hopefully away we will mm -hmm. but i would i would just like to see that interaction more like I, you know what i mean I, I i really love those family dynamics when when the mama and the daddy or the uncle and i really didn't pick up on the fact that willie was his uncle i really didn't until this episode i don't know i just thought he was like a oh like the cut you like know a, cousin yeah, you uncle. Know, like I have a, you know those. I mean? yeah they know each other for you know since right. they were kids so they just like become your uncle <laughs> for right. blood just yeah yeah i didn't know that but yeah. i love those family dynamics but i could totally see why Ernie is the way he is based upon the interaction with his mom at the very mm -hmm. very beginning exactly because i i even went back and watched that fubu episode and you could tell you know mama she's a she's very smart the way she kind of holds on to her money she even says later in this episode about uh the riley's credit, credit card, card yeah. spinner yeah so she's very particular and and i think listen i grew up in a very similar household to that with yeah. uh not necessarily penny pinchers but very conservative when it comes to I'm that straight up. i'm cheap i'm not letting yeah, you yeah. My i'm saying yeah 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 and, I'm, and, gonna, I'm not childhood. i'm not doing it if it's not yep. necessary i'm not gonna do it now only thing i will splurge on is like take out that, that damn right. door dash oh, got yeah. me in a chokehold. I just can't let it go, man. I just... tell you, L. I tell you, I'm <laughs> right there with you, man. Um, especially when you don't want to go in the kitchen and cook something. Like, man, it'll be a lot easier if I exactly. just go ahead and click that. Click. Yeah, you know what? Get right, that dash pass, no delivery exactly. fees, and exactly. we in there. Exactly. Uh, butterscotch, yeah, that was another one that was uh, always oh, God, the butterscotch, offered. Yeah. And that was a flame now. Those are flame. Eat enough of those, you will uh, end up with a sore stomach. But <laughs> we, we get the whole family dynamic here. Um, and this is the, the actual scene here where he offers the uh the the piece of uh candy there to, or I should say, cough drop to you know, Mr. Mr. Earn there. Now, some people in my comment section, uh L, and I'm curious on your thoughts on this. When we were in episode two in his therapy session, he had the, the therapist had mentioned something about, you know, not trusting a family member and someone. It seemed like they might have been alluding to some type of abuse. Yeah. Now, some people were speculating that they thought that the granddad might have had uh, might have been that particular person. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if that's something you, you looked into um, as far as uh, a family drama or connections. Do you, do you think there was something there? Uh, Al? I don't I don't know. I mean. I don't know. I, I've seen a lot of things as it relates to abuse mm -hmm. of any kind and the dynamics that it plays within a family is usually somebody close. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it very well could be. And I, I but I don't see his mom like caring for someone who, who would have yeah. abused her son. Um, right. But it, it might not be known. I, I don't know. Right. Right. I don't know. You know, you never know. Um, but Unfortunately, most most people that got a little funny somebody in the family, a funny uncle, a funny yeah. grandpa, a funny, you know, it right. could be a funny AT, you know, that kind of thing. So mm. I don't know. That's a tough one. But I would be interested to see if they bring that back up. 
I was going to ask to like kind of wrap up or give us some kind of you know context around that. Mm -hmm. No, I agree. I agree. Um, because yeah, I didn't I didn't get a sense of that in this episode. And like you said, I don't even think Earn would want to be put himself in that, in that position. Now he did. It sounded like he was kind of caught off guard that they were going to pick up Jenny uh, because mm -hmm. he said, "Oh, I didn't know you talked to Auntie Jenny in a while." Right. Uh, so maybe he was kind of you know thrown off course and just kind of played it cool. But I, like you said, I'm very curious to see if they if they bring that back up. Yeah. But Speaking of that family dynamic, right off the bat, Elle, when we meet Auntie Jenny, she's uh, and this is the thing about aunties, y'all. They can be the sweetest people in the world, but also the most judgmental people in the world. And the way she kind of throws it in there, being very, you know, offering the, the cough drop. Oh, I'm good, Auntie. Thank you. Uh, you know, and, and be, oh, you know, I'm so glad you're, you're at church. How's how's the baby doing? How's, uh, you know, Van? Very small, light work. And then, boom, they come with the hammer. Right. They come with the hammer and being like, well, I'm glad you're going to church because of this, that, and the third. I mean, right off the bat, El, what did you think about Auntie Jitty? Well, when I saw her at first, I was like, where, why do I know this lady? Like, why mm -hmm. do I know this actress? And then it popped in my head. She was on Fresh Prince of Bel-Air yeah. back in the day. Yep. And she was on like Family Man. She used to be like popping in and out like back in the day in the 90s on sitcoms and stuff. And I was like, oh, okay. I remember her. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, she, she was giving me very familiar. She was yep. giving very familiar because, you know, it's like you those kinds of people, they're going to impose their will on you. Yep. Like they're, they're going to impart what they believe is right mm -hmm. on you and will use the fact that they're your elder to just get away and say some spicy, crazy stuff that they wouldn't say to anyone else because right. you laid with that girl and left her in sin. What? Ma'am. <laughs> Ma'am. Come on now, you you gonna have to relate. Right, like, relate. it's too early but, for this. <laughs> yeah, like, but you know, it's that's very much what happens a lot yep. of times. Like, they'll just say some stuff and be like, "Well, baby, you know, I love you. I ain't gonna right. ever say nothing to to hurt you." A place of love, judgy af, man, girl. And then I was like, I wonder what her backstory is. You know what right. I mean? Like, why she? Because she has kids, and, right? She has kids that was in in, in college that she still owes Willie eight hundred dollars for. So she has, okay. yeah. Right. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, it's always those people that, you know, but I, I ain't going to do it. Well, yes, I am. I ain't, I'm going to lie. <laughs> I'm about to do, do, it. do it. But it's always those people that like they will like turn the mirror on you so that you don't see them. Exactly. It's like, let me hurry up and make you see. Yep. Like devalue yourself so you don't see mm -hmm. that I devalue myself. She probably struggling with all kinds of stuff. Not that it's a real person. But when mm -hmm. people do that. That's what it is. It's like a deflection. It's like, yep. you know, I had an aunt one time and I hadn't seen her in like a long time. And she was like, oh, hey, babe, how you doing? Your hips spreading, huh? You're not out here making bad choice. I was like, wait a minute. Wait a second. Wait a minute now. It can't be because I'm just yeah. right. nah, it can't be that. It can't be because I've been at every crawfish ball this summer. <laughs> It got to be that I'm being fast and I just, I just can't get with it. And, and you know, at one point when you're, when you turn into an adult, yep. it's, it's easy for you to check that. Like, don't talk to me like that, ain't he? You, you know, and know, I mean? and, and to that point, Al, and, and yes, there's, there's so many uncles and aunties, it's just so out of line. And again, they use their elderly card as like a, a protective yep. shield, which, yep. and, and to that point of this episode, which we'll talk about with Willie, I think kind of shows the dynamic of generational respect towards our elders with well, a kid earlier you know in this episode completely disrespectful i mean come on what the oh my hell God. are you doing uh oh versus God. like you know uh, uh, our generation being you know we wouldn't do that we wouldn't Never. be sitting there asking some photo and clown exactly clowning out like that so i think this episode also speaks to just that generational disconnect or lack yeah. of respect for our elders and again yeah. Ern was very he could have been very like you said uh oh he could have been very like hold on auntie you don't need to be right known. he could have clapped back at her but no yeah. he was just he just sat there and kind of you know took it took it Exactly. Yep. Uh, yep. Exactly. So I think it this goes is back so for that. Things. Like children are to be seen and not heard. Like don't get in grown folk conversation. Don't talk exactly. when we talking like that kind of thing. Yep. And it stick with you. It's like a muscle memory. It's like mm -hmm. let me go ahead and get out of here because you know whatever. But yeah, it's very much a generational thing. And I think that like a lot of times, like people who are our age or a little older than us who have children who are, you know, Gen Z. What is it, Gen Z? I'm so, yeah, I'm, I'm I don't know. You know what I'm talking point. about. Yep. <laughs> um, that they have raised their kids in a particular way that mm -hmm. there's like an entitlement, right? To 
like space or access or whatever. And like mm-hmm. when that boy did that in that mall, I was enraged. I yep. was, I just, <clears throat> I didn't understand it. But a lot of times they'll do things like that just for attention. It's like you want to be seen and you want people to laugh at what you did and put it on a gram or TikTok or whatever. Mm-hmm. And you're not even realizing how disrespectful you be. Or maybe you do. Uh, right. I don't know. I that's know, that's, that's why I keep pepper spray on me. I will pepper spray you, sir. You better get out of my face. Don't play with me like that. Hell, the that point right there, and uh, you know, obviously with with my platform, I, I'll try to be on all the platforms, just kind of you know promoting all that stuff. But you know, yeah. every now and then, you catch yourself scrolling, scrolling, and it's so many of those type of videos, L, where they're just being disrespectful, trying to get a click, trying to go viral, and and, and they'll do. Anything. anything i'm talking about anything to get a like to get a share to get a yeah. you know whatever it's kind of so, like yeah. um the episode when they were in traffic and the dude was like yeah that's my boy like paper boy. Yep. that's my cousin back there you exactly. know that? and just will lie in everybody's face and we yep. know you lying and you exactly. don't even care that we know you lying right <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous so, so again that's the thing of this show is there's so many layers to it but yep. one of the layers in this episode um I mentioned it in my my little breakdown that i almost died in this episode damn near i did die <laughs> when we get this moment here, L, I don't know if I've laughed so hard in so long because there's this like this, this <laughs> line of communication between Ern and his mom. So we obviously know earlier in the episode she mentioned, I'm gonna steal him. And Ern's just kind of like, you know, she's yeah. saying that, but <laughs> she might actually do it, but not today. She ain't gonna do it today. It's you know, right. it's, it's like we Batman, gotta have a little bit more prep time. L, when I tell you, when Ern looks in the car. And then we go from looking to in the car and then looking at his mom without a word. You know, he just kind of knew. And she just gave him that look like, yep, this is it. Out of this is it. This is my shot. This is my one <laughs> chance opportunity. Oh, I was dead. I was Damn. dead. And even better was the reaction of Auntie Jenny looking at him like, oh, you right. went on. Like, oh, El, walk me through it. How, how did Man. you take in this scene? Was, was, you, was, you, was you just on the floor? I, it was I, I didn't expect it. I didn't know. Like, I didn't I don't know. I just didn't expect that. I thought we were going to get a good old church scene. You know what mm-hmm, I mean? Everybody mm-hmm. sitting in church and whispering and whatever. Right. I, when that lady pulled off the strength of that engine, like the sound of the engine and them tires screeching in the church parking lot took me down. I was like, hey, mama, you really st- Oh, I had to screenshot so this one. It's the face here for me. Uh, Elle. It's, the, it's the look that she gives him. She's looking like. Dominic Toretto from Fast and the Furious, like she is about to hit the highway and is gone on another mission. She she knew. She said, as soon as she closed this back door, I'm out of here. I'm not waiting. Oh. I'm not about to pause or nothing. I'm out of here. I'm gonna let y'all think I got my church hat on. I'm gonna come sit in the church. Not at all. I'm going all on. What what it went? It looked like they went to like a, a car gas station or something. Yeah, or something. Yeah. Yeah. Or or well, ex, know uh, you know, grandpa. They were in um, you know, Egypt. Right, him, yeah, so. right, yeah. yeah. Right. I don't even know if she had a plan because you know, maybe she just took them to a random place that they wouldn't suspect that she was at because she knew Jeannie was gonna cut up. Yeah, I don't know, but that was very funny. I didn't expect it at all. <sighs> unexpected, <laughs> unexpected. And uh, um, with that note, I- I'm so happy to bring in our next guest here, Elle, uh, who joined us uh, last week and the week before. And we and I'm happy to have her back. And I'm so excited to get her thoughts on this episode. I'm talking about the one and only Tyra from Struggle Reviews. What's going hey, on, Tyra? Tyra? What's up? <laughs> How y'all doing? Hey, Tyra, we, we just in here reminiscing about going to church back in the day, uh, being, uh, you know, Thanksgiving <laughs> full of candies uh, that aunties and, and grandmas have in their purse. So, you know, we're just catching up old times. Yeah. I was thinking about that watching this episode. I was like, I was more on Ern's side. Like, can we just stop? Like, it's no hunger, like Sunday church hunger. Like, you just it's happen right. to be like extra hungry mm-hmm. and it's yep. never a moment to get any food. Like, can we stop? And then you want to slip me some peppermints, grandma. Like, that's a meal <laughs> supplement. That is not the same thing. It's I need not. some food. <laughs> then it's gonna make it might make you hungrier and it's gonna add a little level exactly. of thirst on you. Oh Man, it's there, especially oh if it's like goodness. the first and you salivating for that cracker and that ocean spray juice, that blood of Jesus. <laughs> oh man. Listen, listen. And and I, I think the parents and the pastors and the deacons, they they probably plan that for the kids not to eat so they can stay a little bit extra longer, you know, uh get that extra communion going and then have that Sunday little get together at the end where you got the, the cakes end, yeah. and the, all the yeah. foods oh, and just wow. you know. Plate. Yes. Oh, whole plate, whole plate. But Tyra, yes. before we get get into the episode and get your thoughts, why don't you introduce yourself to the fine folks at home? Oh, 
guys, I am Struggle Reviews TV. I do movie commentary, TV shows. My, my specialties are throwbacks. Of course, I have a paywall for that where people pay for me to talk about oldie but goodies movies and give my perspective. We have a good time over on my channel. Please go and follow my Instagram and all of that good stuff to see, you know, what I have coming next. <laughs> do it, guys. Do it. Uh, yeah. Not only does she do great uh, throwback reviews, but she's also, and this is one of my favorite, one of many things I love about Tyra. She's a horror fan like I am. So uh, Tyra, <laughs> it's spooky time. It is spooky time. And we got some uh, some some spooky stuff coming for us. Uh, Hellraisers, uh, Midnight Club <laughs> coming up this week. I don't know if any of y'all got a chance to see this little movie mm. uh, a couple of days that ago. That movie can go to hell. Listen, <laughs> hell. We can go to hell. I just, I I just saw it. it. I just Listen, saw it yeah. actually last night. And I was yeah. pleasantly surprised. You know, you have I'm, I'm ready for that. Re you got that Going review coming in, this week? It's, it's coming because, you oh, know, yeah. I thought we were getting, uh, I don't know, which, I think Truth or Dare, Truth, or, you, know, oh my some, you know, that wonkiness, like they, mm -hmm. it's the gimmicky, but it, it actually has some depth. So I was surprised yeah. at that. It's cheesy. Don't get me wrong. The, the yeah. smile is a bit of a cheesy <laughs> and capping it, but I'm telling you, L, if you like a good jump scare every now and then, and then now and then again after that, you might want to check it out, L. I'm L, the girl who goes to the face. haunted house because of peer pressure yeah. and will be windmill fighting like Whitley Gilbert in the, the haunted house <laughs> because I'm just reactive like that. I don't like being scared. I love and it. And I don't I don't enjoy I don't enjoy that that thing. I'm glad y'all made it out though. I'm glad y'all did it for the culture. Yeah. Yeah. But not yeah. I see the cat. I'm good on that. <laughs> well Ty, we're getting you up to speed to what we we we, we cover kind of the again just the nostalgia of the episode. But before we mm -hmm. get your thoughts on what I think is one of the funniest moments of the episode, just your general opinion on this episode and was it something that you connected with, resonated with? What's your thought of uh just your general take before we break it all down? I definitely connected. I knew who Auntie Jean was as soon as I saw her. Like, oh, I'm like, oh, you that on and then you like mm -hmm. skinny it Oh man. man <laughs> <laughs> this is about to be an issue, but I felt seen. I felt like my family was seen. Like, yeah. I know this whole scenario. I knew what it was before she got in the car and Ern's, like, mood changed. And it was like, yeah, I'm going to pick up your aunt and I'm going to get daddy. It's like, mm -hmm. oh, look, this is going to be one go. of those Sundays. Yeah. Right. But I, I felt like this uh, episode, even though it was uh, kind of slower paced, I did enjoy this episode. Like, I really, uh, I wanted more. I was like, dang, I wish we got more of this family dynamic in this backstory because, it, you know, I'm sure we're not going to you know double back into this but i thought it yeah. was so awesome i love just uh kind of seeing al and Ern kind of revert back to children like uh mm -hmm. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. like kind of like stay in your place be quiet this episode and it's just like we this is what we've been dealing with our entire life and me Ern, i don't want to end up like them i don't want to be carrying grudges and it just it just had a lot to say about uh fathers and um I was under the impression that, oh, I knew who the aunt was, first of all, because I'm like, that aunt who's giving out that judgment, that's the one that has the most going on. Right. <laughs> but she's, you know, just projecting to show on her mm -hmm. old, like, oh, sin and degradation, come on in this church, yep. and get saved, fornication. Like, oh, ma'am, ma'am, leave it over there. <laughs> leave that over there. <laughs> Yep. But I, um, it was just a lot to be said about just the treatment because even though it, she was like, oh, y'all have always been this way towards me because I'm light skinned and they mm. just laughed at her. But I did feel like it wasn't just that, but it's like, what is her position as far as the father? How did he end up solely in her care? Did he spend more time with her than Gloria? Because she's very adamant. Like, he doesn't know who you are. Like, you're resenting that, you know, he was maybe right. more so my daddy than he was yours. And it didn't even seem like it was just the kids on the phone. It, well, the kids, the grown-ups. <laughs> right. They were acting like kids on the phone. It's like, daddy have children everywhere. Like, you don't get to dictate when and where he can spend time with who. So I thought it said a lot about Papa being a Rolling Stone. And maybe Gloria feeling a little smited. Like, you didn't really spend time with me like that. And us now in our big age, I'm not going to have another person dictate when I get to spend time with my own dad. I'm still right. a daddy. And she sped off. And it was hilarious. <laughs> yep. It's so well said, Tyra. This episode yep. definitely shines a light on even looking at Ern and Al. They still have Ooh, trauma from when they were growing up. And obviously yeah. we see that generational kind of trajectory of it kind of carries over from the next gen, you know. So it's definitely so many layers to it, uh, um, uh, Tyra. And, and, and I want to get your thoughts. And then we're going to jump right into L's thoughts here again on just the comedy beast. Tyra, me and L talked about it. But I mean, can, can you walk us through? how you were probably laughing or just on the floor. Like this show is just when I'm telling you, Tyra, when she drove off 
Again, I, I, I related her to, to Dominic Toretto from Fast and the Furious. She was gone. She just not. She did not look back, as they say in this episode. She, I don't know what the plan was, like uh, L said, but she didn't care. She'll figure it out when she get there. Your man. thoughts on this scene here, Tyra? Like, man, my toe could have been this close to the wheel. You just, you ain't care about none of our <laughs> lives. Like, what? Like, dang, my like when she said, like, I'm thinking about you, like, man, I could have killed daddy. I don't like how she's abusing her power as his sole right. caretaker. I didn't right. know, like. Like right at this moment, like like she literally stole him. I was not expecting that, but it really showed the gravity of how how hard she felt. Like, no, I'm spending time with daddy. I'm sick of this, and I'm with her. Like, I was I was stuck in disbelief. Like, wow, she just sped off like that so oh. quickly. It was so smooth. It was so smooth. It was smooth, so calculated. You know. Smooth. Well, my question is, Tyra L, what would have happened if, if someone was walking in front of the car? Was she just would have she hit him? Was she They'd just been out of it? I mean, it been come on now. she would have been, she would have asked the law for forgiveness. And she would have pulled a reverse and just went that one just reverse on it. him. Yes. Yeah. And right here, Tyra, like I said, I need to, I need someone to put this, this mug on a t-shirt. This is like, or a new meme. It's like, this, I'm going to give you that look. You know, it's going down because she, she was just ready. Elle says she got the hat on. Let the, don't let the hat fool you. Don't she let got that happen. Dress. She got her Sunday's best on. Like she got dressed like we're going to have Sunday service and then we're gonna have that good old Luby's golden corral buffet dinner. Right. When you yeah. speed off, like she 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 had this plan like from the get. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Well, switching it over to you, uh, L. Before we kind of get more into the church scenes and everything going on with the studio, we got Uncle Riley, uh, L, trying to get a little bit of free time, right? I think we can all relate to that, uh, especially uh, you know when when families yelling, screaming every day of the week. You got to fix this. You got to do this. Yeah. You got to you know have all the duties of being an adult. You need a little me time. Uh, yeah. L, your thoughts on this? And I know you mentioned early going to the mall early. Again, another relatable factor of this episode. Your thoughts on uh, Uncle Riley kind of having a little bit of solitude for three hours? I'm not mad at it. I totally get it. And and my backstory for that in my mind is that because I, you know, it's, it it makes sense. You know, when you marry to somebody, you marry their family, right? And they've been yep. married for 30, 40 years. He been dealing with them siblings and that drama for 30, 40 years. <laughs> and he's sick of it. He don't want no pass in it. He mm -hmm. loved the Lord just as much as anybody else, but he's not going to sit in there with them, them siblings and he's not going to deal with it. He's going to go get his shoe shine. He's going to go get a pretzel. He's going to walk around and get him a phone case. He's going to, you know, do his little thing before right. anybody gets in there. And I definitely get that because it's, I don't, I don't even know if there's been like documented proof of this, but the mall does make a shift though. Like it's like a shift at a certain time of the day mm -hmm. it's you know the old people walking in the mall at yep, the early birds the early birds some yep. of the stores not even open them people the next right. steps and it's quiet it's clean everything is folded nice it's not you don't have to wait in line i get Calm it i get it storm. he just wants a little solitude shut up talking to me i don't want to talk to nobody um but i did think it was interesting in that this episode was titled light skinned it mm -hmm. and he was walking through the mall and a, a dark skinned sister was like, Hey, can I interest you in a what? He was like, Nah, girl. Uh. And then the light skinned lady was like, Hey, can I interest you in a hat? He was like, mm. Uh, no. Nah. Why? Right. Right. You Good know what point. I mean? And I thought that was a really interesting take. I don't know if they, I'm sure they probably did I'm that not, on purpose. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, but I really thought that that was because there is, you know, there is like, um, colorism, obviously, mm -hmm. there is like a pretty privilege. <clears throat> like if you are seen as desirable, people usually, you know, feel more liable to communicate with you or get down with you because they just value you in a different way that they don't value somebody who isn't traditionally pretty or attractive. And I like that they subtly did that because that's a right. big thing, but they did it so smooth and so easy. Mm -hmm. um, and I really, really enjoy that. And I just... <laughs> And I, <laughs> the hat that he got very much looked like a hat that he would have got. I don't know. No. It just looked like it had his name on it. It matched with his outfit. And she probably charged him double for what it was worth. But okay, mm -hmm. now, look at him now. Come on, player. Pimpin. And it had Pimpin the, the cross on it. You know what I mean? Because it's Sunday. I don't know if that mm -hmm. was a feather or a piece of fabric or whatever, but he was feeling this up. And I'm yeah, not mad at him. Yeah, no, nah, I, I definitely, definitely swagged out. Uh, Getting your thoughts, Tyra, on this uncle uh, taking his time, three hours of solitude. And also, too, to Elle's point, I definitely think that it wasn't just uh, mm -hmm. a coincidence that the woman that caught his attention was light-skinned. Um, your thoughts on, on that? And, and can you relate to just having some, some me time? 
Definitely. Like, I don't even think it was so much even like this particular day. You just had to have some me time. I'm sure they talked and he knew like, you know what? I know exactly how this day is going to go. I don't want, you know, I need to get a phone. Like, and this is, you know, another instance of somebody going into a mall, going to get something and walk, not walking out with what they went in there for. <laughs> but first of all, I already feel hurt anytime we get Isaiah Whitlock in anything. We don't get a shit. I was yeah. waiting for that to happen <laughs> in the episode and he did not say it. I was disappointed. I know. But uh, it just brought back uh, mall nostalgia. Me personally, I have not been to a mall in a I very hate going long. to a mall. Yeah. <laughs> I um, haven't been like it was just the uh, even more so like I caught the whole you know the the lighter uh kiosk lady getting his attention with the hat but mm -hmm. just that hound of the like them kiosk people oh, they be on it <laughs> they, they be on me. it like they be trying to get those sales excuse me like they, they really be selling it and you know they mm -hmm. make you feel special and in that moment she made him like I got that special hat like they okay. always got you something knew. to pull you in mm -hmm. and just to see like not only him coming in there early, but just how the mall shit, because there's always an, um, anytime we get Earn's family or anything, there's like this generational shift, like this cultural shift, like the lack of respect within mm. this episode. We see how Earn and uh, Al were acting in this episode in comparison to the, 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 like the, the, the shift in the mall that he was trying to avoid, like just the, the disdain on his face when he realized what time it was. And he was like, oh, oh no. I thought we was going to get the shit at that moment. Like, <laughs> oh my goodness. I really miscalculated my time that bad that I'm in here with them. Like, yep. you shouldn't feel like that. Like, you know, the, the lack of respect was so mm -hmm. blatant in this episode. Like, and it was a little reckless. I didn't know what that young man was going to do. Like, the way he rolled up on him about yeah. the hat. Like, just the, the 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 whole scene was just bad. And, like, it was, you know, you're trying to embarrass me. I just hated the whole thing. And I hate just the lack of just respect, respect for anything. Yeah. Like, I still, I get people who look upside my head now if I go, you know, still to this day, like, yes, ma'am, or no, sir. Like, like, oh, like. Why? Why are you doing that? Yeah, like, because yeah. that's what you know. We were that's talking. Was you, you know, we, yep. we respect our elders, or even my kids. Mm -hmm. When my kids come and tell me, or you know, somebody hears them say, "Yes, ma'am," like, "Oh, they're just so like, like I can't. I would never have my kids. You know, some people allow their kids to call them by their first name. Oh, like, hey, hey, you do what you want to do at your house, but this is the way that I was raised, and the way that I decide. You know, this is a sign of respect. It's not me yep. belittling myself to you know approach an elder in a certain way, but this generation is totally different, and it really mm -hmm. showed how this is waning on him this episode like he was trying so hard to get away from <laughs> what he thought the was family just drama the of his day and then yep. you know you backhand spend a little too much time at the kiosk smiling and light skin face <laughs> and now all these youngins then rolled up on you with the, with the tiktoks and i'm going to go yep. viral in the extraness like it's like nobody of any age should feel like they have to avoid a crowd or stay in their house but it just made me feel old at how much the culture of the mall has changed because the mall used to be <sighs> back in the, the day mall. I was a spot. <laughs> the mall used to be the hangout spot. Like you yeah. could wait like the weekend. Like the mall was safe. Like you, the mall isn't even, you know, yeah. safe. Anymore. I live like, out here in Missouri and we have, I can't tell you, I mean countless crimes of shootings no, and robberies. Uh Your mom gallery of mall like, out here. I'm dropping you off at this mall at this time. I'll mm -hmm. be back at this time. You got to link up with your yep. friends, the stores, yep. the vibe was different. Like yep. a lot of times you go now, since the mall is like the mall now, a lot of stores are closed. Like closed. The it's a, it's it's just a all cemetery. And now we have to worry about today's culture being in the mall, pulling out a gun. Like it's this right. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is so much. I mean, yeah, it's, speaking of malls, Again, I'm out here in Missouri. There's one, there's a mall, a gallery, a mall that's very popular, but that's like the only popular mall out here because everything else, like you just brought up, Ty, was like a the Walking Dead. I mean, it's yeah, slow, yeah. every shop's closed. Uh, it's kind of sad too, but also yeah. it just speaks to you know online, uh, you know, people buying online and kind of that disconnect. Again, people don't like to be embarrassed or be around a younger generation. They'd just rather buy something online and go into a physical store and, and run into someone trying to catch them or I prank them don't. or something like The that. last time mm -hmm. I went in a mall, like, and then it's like, if it's not the hangout spot, like it's the it's a fashion show, like you get to see all like where's she going with what, what, what like cubby eyes, baby. This is the mall. We're in public. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 just not what it used to be anymore. <laughs> yeah. And you know is. what I thought about too? I, I thought like you know, I, I just thought it was so interesting that that boy would, would roll up on Riley like that and, like, literally disrespect his boundary. He was, like, this close right, right upon to him. his yeah. face mm -hmm. and not have any idea. 
because Riley could have been an OG, triple OG. Right, like, you never, right. You don't know people. You don't know what people have with them or what mm -hmm. they are going through or what they are capable of. And he just was so brazen with mm -hmm. his ignorance and brazen with his, you know, need to be seen. And right. I just, I just, I didn't, I, I've never seen that and felt like that. Well, I have, I take it back. Cause it's some wild stuff. Out here. But I just, it just felt like that, that could have been my daddy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like if my daddy would have went to the mall and somebody would have tried him, you know what I mean? I, yeah. It just made me very uncomfortable. uncomfortable. It made me upset, to be honest, because <laughs> invasion of privacy. Like, yeah, yeah. and it's we, like, I was waiting and in like suspense because I'm like, what if he wouldn't have agreed to take that picture Let's with him? Picture, then yeah. what would right. happen? Right, <laughs> right, right. And it used to be, you know, that you just leave old people alone. You don't. Need, it ain't. <laughs> right. It ain't no need right. to talk. What you talking for? It's no need for y'all to talk. Like, unless it's a. Yes, ma'am. Or I'm gonna pick that up for you. I'm gonna reach and get that for you, or whatever. It's no need for you to talk. If you're 18 and you're in the mall, why are you conversing with a 70 something year old man in the first place? <laughs> right. So it shouldn't even be a conversation. But it was just so unnecessary and so, um, whatever the word is, it was just terrible to see. And I know stuff like that goes on all the time because we hear about it. Um, yeah. but you know, to have him then be the person at the restaurant. Riley was better than me because I would have I would have let him have it. I would have let him have it after that. The bread. That oh, was, wait, that was bread. the boy at the restaurant. Yeah, I swear. I, I, I thought it was too, El. But I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna. We gonna. I'm I gonna did, get a I shot of that. He looked similar. I, I don't like, know if it was. He him, he had but the but you, the I'm gonna have to go back totally and look. Different. So I just. I like, thought I'm he like had the same yeah. shirt on, like he had a work shirt on in the mall, and then he had a shirt on the same shirt on in the thing, and that's why. uh um, Riley had gotten such an attitude. I mean, you know, he was in a bad mood anyway, but I thought that was why he had gotten such an attitude. Y'all let me know. I'm going to have to go we'll, watch we'll, it we'll, yeah, I'll, I'll bring up the shots the and person. see if that's the same kid, because that would, yeah, okay. that would explain his reactions yeah. there. Well, no, I um, thought it was just, you know, egging on. Like, it was just like, I already had to deal with this. Like, just right. no, bring us the bread. Not I thought two, it was, not you know, two one. Right. Okay, the bread. Yeah. Not the bread. Right, yeah, that we'll made me extra hot. Because I was like, you you mean to tell me you 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 got spicy with me in the mall, and now you now my you server, and I'm dinner? just gonna sit here. I'm gonna tell you, I'm gonna light you up. But that's probably why he didn't light him up. Okay, mm -hmm. that's good. that makes me. It was far too many manners from little baby. Like the whole, oh, like man. if he could switch up like that, he needs an Oscar. Like that, that's right. a dangerous young man. <laughs> <laughs> Well, speaking of dangerous young man um, who's going through a lot of uh, uh, trials and tribulations, uh, we transition over to studio time. And I don't know if you guys are, I know Tyra, she's a, you know, oh, a yeah. hip hop. Uh, like, it's Gunna. We got Gunna who is dealing with his old Rico case, but uh, Uno, we're playing a game of Uno here and my boy doesn't know how to play it, but uh, you know, uh, if he goes to, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say, if he, he might learn how to play Uno if he gets up. Uh, uh, with this Rico case, because we playing uh, if if we uh, you know if he's found to be guilty. But anyway, we're in the studio. We got my boy Al, who by the way I don't know if y'all know, my man had a had a had a Glock, man. He, he was did. he was locked and loaded. I don't know if that speaks to more of Al anxiety, depression, just kind of having look over his shoulder, or if that's just you know being in Atlanta, being in the hood, <laughs> just got to be prepared for anything to happen. But it's uh, some ruckus going on in the in the uh, hallways, Tyra, and it comes to be Auntie Jenny. And again, it goes back to respecting your elders and i think that again speaks to the generational theme in this episode these are you know we got gunner we got some security guards as soon as she said everyone get out no one asked any questions no one <laughs> said anything crazy to her they knew what time it was they said okay yeah we'll go ahead. and then get you it's kind of like a sour patch they can be sour and be sweet when she says oh and by the way i like your earrings baby <laughs> yeah. it just it, it just summarizes a, a, what an auntie that uh, you know uh representing an auntie there but tyra your thoughts on studio time and how she was able to just literally get those those guys out of there without a question or uh you know uh respect that they gave her i just loved it like i think the generation now like i think it's even a tiktok now where they go like oh you can get respect long as i get it back and of course you know that's that's necessary but it just says a lot about the generation i just i just feel bad about where we're going <laughs> where we're going like i like the fact that they knew what it was like whatever it is this is 
they, they didn't even know like we just know like this is a woman this is an right. older woman let's just get up like regardless of what she i don't she could have been coming in there with anything but even al he was like oh everybody just wrap it up like up here, here she come yeah. Girl, you could have took her anywhere but the fact that they all had respect enough to just listen and get up and leave i actually appreciate that about our generation like yeah. of course yeah. we didn't know like you know is he supposed to be seen and not heard everything about about it isn't perfect like you know i do things a little bit different as a parent but I also took a lot away from how we were raised like and I just I appreciate the fact that they had respect enough to not you know who is this rolling up with this like you she and you know our studio time like it, it was none of that like no let's get up the the you know mama said get up we're mm -hmm. getting up <laughs> I agree Elle your thoughts on the level of respect I guess were you surprised or, or again knowing that they were you know we can assume they were kind of in our age range that they had that level of respect and how she was able to clear out that room and in, in, in a heartbeat yeah, I did. I was I was actually surprised. I didn't think it would be that way. I thought they were going to like wild out and call out a name and be like, I ain't going nowhere. This I'm paying for this and just be real spicy about it. Um, but it might have been that suit, child, because, you know, a, only a grown woman going to wear a yellow <laughs> suit with flowers on it and a peplum top and all of that. Right, so right. you know, they might have been like, man, I don't want no smoke or whatever she got going on in here. Right. Um, but I, you know, I did, I did think it was funny with the, you know, I like your earrings, baby. And he was mm -hmm. like, yes, ma'am. Like Amen. it was very much, you know, because earn, I feel like, you know, like what you were saying, it's like when you get around your family, you just feel like you just a kid. Like you, he, mm -hmm. he had to take her like to the studio. Yeah. Yep. It wasn't no, even, it wasn't a question. Like I got to What you want me to do? Like, I got to take her to the studio. Like she's right. gonna make everybody get out. Y'all better get out. Like that's just what it is. So, and then I thought it was funny too that, you know, when they were on the sofa and Aunt Jeannie was running it about how everybody, whatever, whatever, and Al pushed Ern. It was like a big shove, like how kids. Yeah, yeah. Do, it's like a little kid shove, like, like dummy. Ern, you like, like tell her on the sofa, like why you right. bring her over here? But you exactly. can't say that though. Yep. You can't verbalize <laughs> that. So I'm gonna push you, and you know exactly what I'm talking about. Cause it's one of them elbows, you know, like a, you oh, know, yeah. kind of thing. And it just, it all tied together so well. I thought it was yep. really, really uh, like a really great scene. I didn't know who Gunner was, child. I didn't know who that was. I was just disturbed that he didn't know how to play Uno because why? Like, why? <laughs> hey, I haven't played Uno in a while, but that's something like riding a bike. You never forget. It's like riding right? a bike. Hey, exactly. It's color. It's matching. It's numbers and colors. Yeah, that's it all it is. So I don't know, but maybe that ball was in the trap. I don't know. He ain't learned how to yeah, play maybe. Uno maybe in the trap. I don't know, but um, <laughs> Uno in the I thought it was a great scene, and and I I'm, I I did clock that he had that gun. Um, yeah. but Al not a street dude though. He's not a street guy and he's not like a gangster, but it might be because, you know, he in there with potential felons and like, right. you know, some real street dudes and you never know kind of thing. So yeah. maybe that's why, but I thought it was very interesting that he did have a gun though. So random, but kind of ties to your point, L. And I wonder if you thought about this too, Tyra, at one point. Episode one, the big bang, when he shoot allegedly shot that guy that kicked his girl kicked his car. What we never got a follow up to that, which I know some people theorize that yeah. Atlanta's just like one big dream that they probably that Al might have died that night. Yeah. And this is like from yeah. the which I would I don't, I don't like stuff like that when it's like it's all a dream and I don't like yeah. that. But I'm very curious if they would ever bring that back up that he did shoot a guy and and if he never you know if he died or went to jail. But I don't know, Tyler, was that ever 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 on top of your mind? Like whatever I've happened to been, that? Guy? I've been like I gave up like last season when I was like, oh, we in a totally different place. Like it's we ain't even over there. Like <laughs> And here, like, with it being, you know, the last season, I would hope that they would tie that in because they act like it just never happened. Like, I was thinking, like, okay, maybe right. it was just to make a statement for that particular episode and it's not something yeah. that we're going to revisit. But I would love to follow up with that. What about you? And again, too, L, I know uh, in the hip hop culture, and Tyra can probably speak to it more in regards to she's so knowledgeable on hip hop stuff. Uh, a lot of times, you know, rappers, we talked about Snoop Dogg, right? You know, almost caught a case and luckily didn't go to jail. And there's so many other examples yeah. of rappers being caught in gun shootings and, 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 you know, having good lawyers. But are you ever wanting to know what happened to Al and, and that night and if the dude lived or died and if they'll bring it back at all? Yeah, I got like 47 questions about Atlanta. They will bring <laughs> up stuff and then just never go back to it again. And I'm right. like, you gotta, you gotta wrap it up. And I don't, I don't know how many episodes, how many episodes is in this season? Oh, we're getting 10. We're getting four. Yeah, yeah. And what are we on? What is this? Four? This was four. So we got four. six more of them yes. things. They better hurry up because <laughs> like you can't, and then they introducing new stuff 
you know, in the episode with therapy and the abuse and the whole thing. Don't listen. They got to wrap it up. So, yes, I definitely want to know what's going on with that. And I want some more backstory on all the characters. But, yeah. you know, it could. Who It's Atlanta. You know what I mean? It's who Atlanta. knows? It's yeah. Atlanta. And, and to this comment here, I, I, I totally, I guess it does, it does kind of tie in. That that gave him that street cred, right? That he was kind of yeah, uh, didn't have and, and people on the streets recognize. So, I guess that kind of it didn't place that. Right. I would say a place that that's, you know, I, I remember when, uh, you know, in high school, when the, the whole 50 and game beef and people were like oh, 20, 30 deep in the studio. Some dude got shot and died and all that stuff. But that, that boosted their cred and it helped that, that next album sell. Uh, so it is a uh, pretty sad. 50 whole career was boosted because he got shot nine times. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It was a Very wild true. place back in the day. It was wild. Like I well, it was listen, it was crazy. It was like the stu I would personally never want to go to the studio or the source awards back in the day. Right. It's, it's a high probability you might get shot okay. or be up. Right. It's, worse. it's worse now than it was then because at Is first it? you were My trying God. to get out of the out of the gangs, out of the street, and, and try to have your own legitimacy. Yeah. And once you got on, you left that alone. But now people are rapping yeah. and they're going back yeah. to the streets Stand to go there. like, yeah, this this is who I am. Like I don't just right. say it, you know, for clout. This is how I'm moving. Like it's crazy. It is. You gonna have to I talk mean, to me, Tyra, about how yeah. people um are not in gangs and they don't come from the street prior to being a celebrity and a millionaire mm -hmm. and then when they get on all of a sudden they repping power oh, yeah, they, and they crush the yeah. bloods and mm -hmm. they gotta yeah. you know soldier boy would get up in and tell you he is just a whole street gangster like <laughs> like we don't remember like we wasn't street there. endorsement <laughs> yeah like you don't have to talk to me about that i never understood that part and it makes sense to me that like well i get i get you know people gonna want to keep you where you are and they're not gonna want to see you get out or do better mm -hmm. or whatever and they're gonna yeah. try to call your credibility into question. Yeah. Um, it's profitable so I don't know, to attach yourself. To I was about to say that's you know. the thing. It's a money. It's yeah, just it's a money prof thing. Profitable to attach yourself yeah. just to go mm -hmm. like I'm down with like this generation. Like they glamorize and you know put this stuff on a pedestal to go. Oh, he rocking with them. Like oh, I need to support them more. I need to go. Right. You know, he he really about something. Like it's just it's completely wrong. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we, we all have a whole. Was <laughs> <laughs> we are. <laughs> We all, I'm just sitting here thinking like, Lord, we, we really, we really all, yeah, we all, cause yeah, I'm going to leave that alone, but it's okay. I love it. I lo and this is what Atlanta does. Yeah, it brings okay out those it. conversations. Those old, I'm just okay make you think it. back. Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right with it too. I I'm, love yeah. being old. Like I never yep. thought I would be the one to be like, I'm so glad that I'm not, you know, with, cause I'm sure at once upon a time, like we were, I'm so glad I'm not a part of that generation. And it just right. trickles down. And I'm just like, I'm so glad that I'm not a part of the new generation. <laughs> Really, I remember <laughs> like about two weeks ago. Um, I got in my car and I didn't even start my sure. car, and I put my <laughs> seatbelt on. And I remember being like first getting my my driver's license in. and jumping and mm -hmm. getting. I'm not buckling up. I'm not doing oh, nothing but turning right. my album up, and I'm out. But now it's like it's I will never get in the car without a seatbelt. You know, right, it's a routine. Get in there, put the seatbelt on, <laughs> you get your stuff. It's just a whole tight. thing. Whole thing. <laughs> Do thing, this on the dashboard. Like, I need to wash right, right. it. Exactly. I got to take my car to the car. Right, I tell yeah, you. I exactly. tell you. That's how uh, I am. I'm with it. I'm with shout it. out to shout out to Mo because again, uh, L. This is another great question. I can't remember the episode, Mo. Maybe you can help us out. But I think it was season two. There was someone. It was the episode when the dude was the social media uh, Vine dude. I can't remember his name right now. He was kind of light skinned yeah. and he had the T-shirt. He was clowning Al the whole episode. I think this is when Earn was getting the dog with Darius. But there was a dude yeah. in the bar looking for Paperboy, and, and the, the bartender was like, "He, you know, he didn't look like he was a good guy." Which I think a lot of people, and I think a lot of us, are thinking that Al might die by the end of this season because they've been kind of a lot of death. <laughs> it's been very common since last season, so. I don't know, um, Tyra L. Any any foreshadowing of, of whoever I can't, this person like, was? I remember who that. I, can, I I remember the whole scenario and exactly what happened. I can't oh, place Zan, the place, and I cannot yeah. place the name. Like, I feel like we're so far removed from season right. two. So, like, yeah. it would yeah. like really, I think, benefit us all, especially since they're back in Atlanta to go back and revisit those first two seasons. But yeah, I I, I hope like they better not touch Paperboy. Like, let's not end yeah, all not, on that kind of hey, note. Blue Yo, blood, uh, blue blood, and. Yodel right. kid, and they've been yep. they've been pointing us that direction this this yep. whole season. That that would be pretty sad though, because I think uh, um, 
Al mentioned it earlier. I, I love when we spend time with, with Al, just kind of, and more so Al versus Paperboy, because obviously we get mm. to spend more time in his head space and woods and last season with his whole, with the um, Lorene episode. So I hope he don't die. But I mean, they've been yeah. giving us these these little Easter eggs throughout the, throughout the I show. I want him to be happy. That's what yeah. I want. I want to see him good. Like, Al, you know, he's never... He never was in like a relationship or right. he never, you know, had like something he's really into or a hobby or anything. He's just really <laughs> depressed and sad. Yeah. And I really don't want that for my guy L. Like that's yeah. that's that's my boy. I don't want him to die. I will be very upset. Don't don't kill him at don't the end, end like and that. then take it away. Oh he's no. Like the sopranos and just right. fade the black. Just no, maybe the they'll black. have like a Tupac scenario where everybody thought like Tupac just disappeared. Like, ah, he died, he's in Cuba. Died. Like, maybe he'll be off somewhere just living his best Chilling. life in the all yeah. garage. I would like maybe that. So that would be cool because I he was like on that. his way somewhere. He was mm -hmm. like, I'm about to go to the airport. And where yep. are you going? I don't know. Maybe Jamaica. Like, maybe he, that would be, I would, I would accept that. And That's there's been a lot of, of um, doors in the first few seasons too right all these escapisms yeah. and stuff like that and the kind of hidden symbol so i i would love that i would love that yeah. but speaking of love the family love right now is kind of lacking y'all and and i know y'all have probably had this game of, of phone call when you like this call this person for this person call well back in the day before we didn't have like two-way three-way four-way calls right. or facetime <laughs> can you call this person when we get one yeah. alive but tyro i'm gonna toss it to you Again, I, I, we talked about the comedy moments of the car scene, but then when you bring in Cat Williams, who uh, <laughs> who's had his own trials and tribulations, his own set of dramas over his career, but I still think he's one of the funniest guys uh, to, yes. to hit the stage. Uh, my man says when they call, she brings out the whole light-skinned thing. You can't, <laughs> Tyra, you can't kidnap your own dad because the word kid is in it. Uh, <laughs> mathematically, it just don't make sense. <laughs> Your thoughts on this conversation and then bringing it back to this this theme of like light skinned and how, you know, the mindset of a, I have some light skinned friends. And yes, there's some things that light skinned people do. He's like only a light skinned person can get away with doing something that <laughs> light skinned. Uh, your thoughts on this conversation and of course, the return of the one and only Cat Williams, Uncle Willie, a.k.a. Alligator Man. Man, I was disappointed. I wanted some, I guess I was being selfish. I wanted a lot more since his present was felt yeah, so strong in yeah. Alligator Man. I'm like, yeah. give my man like at least two more minutes of screen time. Like, I love Cat Williams. Like, he's not even saying anything, trying to be funny. He's just a naturally funny guy. Like, oh, yeah, you know you still owe me $800. Click. Like, it's, <laughs> he's, just, he's just naturally funny. I absolutely wanted more. Like, I yeah. thought maybe we would, you know, tie some things in with, uh, you know, all his trials and tribulations. From hey, he was on the run man. from the cops yeah, last time we saw. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I just you know I wanted that, but just the whole thing like about the discussion of the dad. Like in my video, I have just the Temptations coming in and singing "Papa Was Rolling Stone." <laughs> really? <laughs> because yeah. I'm like, from the way that they're acting with each other, I'm assuming that there are more children, and a lot of these uh children probably have multiple mothers, and right. it's just like you know who and when, like how did he conduct himself as a dad? Like I feel like it's a trickling down effect. Of course, we do have that uh that stigma of of course if she was um I'm, I'm sure she has another mom and you know there's you know they're they're a family but it's like there's mm -hmm. a disconnect because it's like how did he choose to break down his time did he leave one person's mom for her mom was her mom you know uh different you know ethnicity how did you right. know how did he right. go about it maybe you know there was you know some resentment felt like oh not only did you leave but she's that like i just want to know how she ended up with dad like did you spend more because you know normally when you uh are in the care once you're elderly that's the one that you spent the most time with because they mm -hmm. feel you got to really feel for somebody to you know <laughs> take care of them yeah. on, a, on a daily and and how she's acting like this is her entire life and she feels very entitled to him so i feel like that they had you know a, especially with how uh Ern's mom glory is like i feel like he definitely had more of a connection with uh the auntie mm -hmm. and it was just like i wonder how they grew up because i i felt like it was like oh you know you light skin like you know daddy always you know you always got the, the more, more little more time spent with you or you know you yeah. do and then there is that 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 entity of feeling a little bit more privileged because you know you do have lighter skin and it's just like yeah you you saying that now but we remember way back when you would use that to your advantage for mm -hmm. all kinds of other things so don't try to come here and this conversation like i thought it was just a lot of resentment just built up not only on uh their part but the dad and how he maybe conducted himself as a father and it's just like it's just 
I don't want this to be us. Like it's just such a trickling down effect to be holding right. on to that resentment for so long, letting it yeah. build up to where you pull a uh, fast and furious on the parking lot and just speed off. And then that's just, I, I thought it was just mostly on the dad's part, part to be honest and how they were raised in this, that they've been holding on to well into their fifties and sixties. Like right. when are y'all going to, you know, move on and let they it go. Let and let and it go. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I just, I just saw a whole lot of my family and the dysfunction. I was like, Oh man, I, I was with Ern. Like, I don't want to be this. Right. <laughs> I absolutely do not want to be yeah. this. And just to see Ern and Al revert back to kids. Even when she first comes in and Al is that, I, I say, Oh, Al was that sibling. I was talking too much. Like who would, don't nobody know nothing about on glory. You're taking off dead. Like, see, yeah, you know something. Sit down earth it's like and why, why are you talking so much like i shouldn't have shared they're like yeah you talking too much go over there and sit down <laughs> sit in the corner until we you know figure stuff out but right i just felt like this was all stemming from how the dad you know was with their mothers and just the, the mm -hmm. time that gloria feels like she missed out on and like i'm not missing out on it now he's my dad too he knows who i am you know it's gloria right. and we've been in egypt for two weeks like no right <laughs> he was so he everything was going like oh i, I was kind of i was was in my feelings for a little bit. I'm like, oh man, because I listen, Tyree brought up not to get too into a family tree history, but it, it was very relatable. I had I, I come from a, a small big family. My grandmother had like seven, eight siblings, but my mom was the only child, and I was the only child. But when my grandmother's mom got sick and, and between all the siblings, I remember all those conversations. Put her in a home. Now she can stay with me. She ain't staying with you. You got all it, just all that drama and, and all that stuff. And it was just yeah. uh it was it hit home for me, definitely. But L, your thoughts again on this um the phone call the, the brothers and sisters pearl which again I, I would listen at this point i want a prequel i want to see yeah, the, right. their yes. family drama so and much. pearl's kids and jenny's right. kids like it, it's spinoff upon spinoffs but your thoughts on this conversation and, and uh again the return of uh alligator man so relatable man like i have a huge family my dad is one of 12 mm. and my mom is one of five and them brothers and sisters, baby, when they get together, it's and it's something going on. It's gonna be, da, 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 and it's gonna be very. It could be a lot of times very dramatic. Um, but I I thought that scene with all of them on the phone was great because yeah. one genie is obviously younger than them all, right? Mm -hmm. Like mm -hmm. they have different generations of folks in on that conversation. Willie probably is around the same age as uh Jeannie. Janine, Jean what's her name? Jeannie. Uh, Jeannie. Jeannie. Mm -hmm. uh, Willie is probably the same age as Jeannie, but Pearl and the other one are older than them both. And so there is like a generational thing between even them, right? Because they probably were raised differently. Um, and I thought the fact that she said that she was light-skinned and that's why everybody was treating her like that and they bust out <laughs> laughing, was accurate and because it's a lot of times where you know sometimes there is that whole you know colorism thing and, and yeah. people will get treated poorly for the color of their skin in our community but there's mm -hmm. also the fact that some folks who are more fair skinned will will use that and will carry yeah. that with them yeah. in their relationships with darker skinned people so you acting bougie and you acting better than everybody because you like skin that's why we don't get down with you girl <laughs> Not because you light skinned, it is because you treat us poorly, right? You're because evil. of whatever. And um, I thought that was a really great scene, and I thought and she and it seems like Jean is very dramatic anyway. Um, and I could definitely <laughs> see her so. needing them coins, you know, because she owes what you call them eight hundred dollars. Eight hundred dollars, yeah. So if she getting that pension check from her daddy, she's not gonna let that go because she need that money. Right. Um, but I also thought, well, maybe her mama need the money too because she was fussing about that them credit card. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, the MasterCard. Like, yeah. mm -hmm. Is that an issue as well? But it also looked like that's that scene right here where she was talking about how she don't even he don't even remember you. He Birthdays, don't know you. Christmases. That was very hurtful yep. to her. Yeah. Yep. Um, because you know he was her daddy several years before. Gina came along and you right. don't know what that relationship is and neither do we to be honest but you know it was very hurtful to her and I don't think she was coming from a bad place Earn's mom um, I could see Jeannie being the one that's manipulating the situation, situation yeah, the because pension she that called she the up. police yep. and trying to arrest Earn and Al because what for why like just being dramatic and mm -hmm. and you know attention seeking 
So I can see her being the bad guy and not Ern's mom. But I thought it was so many. Just again, Atlanta will give you 17 layers in mm -hmm. one scene. And yep. they really do it really well because it was like 27 layers in that one scene. Exactly. <laughs> And, and like I said, for me, it hit and when she and she and that's the thing about family. You know, you love them. They love you. They know all your secrets. Right. And they know how to cut deep. They know what that that button to push. And she knew that that was the, the triggering point. They all knew when she said it, like, why you had to go? She hung up at that point. They yeah, called her yeah. out on that. So it's, uh, you know, family. Like I said, you love them. They, they they're there for you to think and thin. But they can also be the people that, uh, you know, cut you the deepest and cut you the lowest at points. Um, and a lot of times, though, sometimes they might not love you. Mm -hmm. And sometimes they might not be the ones that's there for you. And right. it, it could be people, you know, blood relatives, brothers and sisters that will just be the ones that cut you the deepest because there really is resentment or like they really don't like you or they really have right. some kind of deep seated whatever. Family is just trash. It's Ooh, a crazy thing, oh, y'all. Man. <laughs> Can't live with them. Can't man. live with them. <laughs> Uh, speaking of family, y'all, uh, we got the, the the family together. The, the old episode one, uh, my man's in the back room, uh, about to come in, dropping his opinion. I'm talking about my man Brandon from Just My Opinion Reviews. What's going on, B? What's going on? What's going on? Hey, How y'all doing? Hey, 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 hey we doing good, B. We, we just uh, you know conversating, talking about family, talking about all the great stuff that the show has to offer, man. All right, what's up, Tara? What's up, L? Good to be back. Hey, did you get them little strawberry candies when you used to go to church? Man, I got the office all the time, you know. And I, oh, I had the look, I had the same look Iron had on his face too. Like this is this not gonna work right now. I need a little bit more. And please, I wasn't turning it down. Like, yeah, great. Give me that good old butterscotch candy. All right, give me. Right. Let me candy. take some extras for later tonight when and I get then hungry I and I can't get the refrigerator. For unwrapping the wrapper too loud. I'm like, we we oh, wow. hollering. <laughs> Y'all can't hear nothing anyway. People ain't here hollering and catching the Holy Ghost passing out, but you mad at me because the butterscotch rapper is loud. Don't. I'm already grumpy and hungry. Leave me alone, right. please. Of course, so I ain't say that because I would have died in the church. But right, they they would have been the church would have became a funeral because you exactly. you know mom and dad would have would have killed exactly. you right oh, in there. Man. Don't bring back through memories. I oh, remember the shout session that used to turn into like slap sessions. Like you shout, like what? What did I do? You <laughs> right. something else? And and that look too. They give you that look. That they oh. smile and that's like, eh, but they give you that look at the same time. It's it's an art form. B, before we get your thoughts on this, man, uh, why don't you introduce yourself to the fine folks at home, my friend? What's going on, everyone? Uh, B Avery with just my opinion reviews. Social media is on the screen right there if you want to follow me. Uh, but I do it all, man. I do movie reviews, uh, spoiler movie reviews, recaps. I got a live show. I just geek out on what I love to talk about as far as Marvel, DC, comic books, superhero, martial arts, black people stuff, justice, whatever. I just uh, like to have a good time and, you know, pop myself up on YouTube when I want to share my opinion with everybody out there. So yes, follow sir. me if you want some more. Yes, sir. And right now, B's the only only outlet that I have for Lord of the Rings. I haven't even watched the second episode, B. You're my outlet right now to know where the show's at. So if y'all love, again, sci-fi, uh, a little bit of horror, because I know Brandon isn't a big horror fan, but he'll sometimes drop some horror content That's on the channel, Brandon. which I'm looking forward to uh, seeing. Sometimes. Yeah, it's a very sometimes, but uh, glad to have you be again. We're uh, we're about halfway through the episode, and just before we get your thoughts, what were some things that stood out to you before we kind of uh, wrap up this back half with the uh, Bobby Schmurter door and the uh, <laughs> red boxing of the world? What was your thoughts on this episode? Just your general opinion. Well, yeah, first of all, just Janine's attitude and her entitlement. Um, I kind of I, I agree with pretty much everything y'all have said, except for her. And I, I love the episode by far. And Elliot, you said this is one of the best of the season. It is. But her walking into the studio, screaming at everybody, get out. You know, I'm not saying I would have bit her head off, uh, but she was extremely rude. If I was if that was my studio, like I was the owner, yeah. I would have I would have had some words. Now, I'm not saying I would have been rude or disrespectful. Mm -hmm. But I, I would have still had some words, like you know, excuse me, like you know, what's, what's yo, going studio on? time is expensive too. That yeah, ain't right. Um, yeah, yeah. So I, I, I was reimburse me. Right. Yeah, I was right. very. Uh, I mean, I love the actress. I forgot her name, but I remember she popped up on the scene for me in uh, Law and Order mm -hmm. uh, a number of years ago. But she did a fantastic job. I hated her character. Yeah, you know, but she, <laughs> I mean, look at her. I mean, she still did a fantastic job. But that that scene here in the studio, for one. And like y'all said, y'all was going in on it, man. Uh, our boy Isaiah at the mall, like, 
I was so furious with that that teenager. I don't think it's the same as the waiter at the end. I could be wrong. Uh, but oh, I wanted to I wanted to jump through the screen and strangle him. Like, are you serious? He called him a nigga. He was like, this nigga here talking to the oh, like my oh, jaw was on tenors. the ground. Like, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> like, <laughs> I was so upset and he 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 held it down. He was able to keep his cool. I wanted him to pop off. I wanted him to create a scene. Too. I wanted him. I, I didn't I didn't care about seeing the angry black man in that moment right there. I wanted to see it. Um and so you know he he let the wrong people see it at the table later on. But uh yeah, I love the episode and those two scenes right there really stood out to me. Yeah, no, I agree with you, man. I agree. It can was I, that, can I say that anger. something before we move on? Oh, one hundred percent, one hundred percent. Dropping on us. Something B said triggered my, my oh, when he said that he like talk about black people stuff. So y'all, all three of y'all, hand clap kudos because y'all do really great. Y'all do a really great job at um, posting on other platforms. I can barely keep up YouTube, but y'all on every platform in America and y'all do a really great job. <laughs> but I was trying to be, do my TikTok thing. And I mm -hmm. saw that there was, there's a lot of conversation around light skinness light skinnedness in the mm -hmm. black community right now in that the NBA draft thing with mm -hmm. the NBA draft having a parents night and the kids came out with their parents mm -hmm. and a lot of them were light skinned boys with white mothers white and black fathers mm -hmm. and there was a lot mm -hmm. of conversation around that and then there was another conversation my for you page is popping on TikTok. I don't know what kind of algorithm it is. <laughs> An algorithm chases you. Yeah. And then there was another, a lot of conversation around Trevor Noah, a light-skinned black man um, dating white uh, women. Dalipa? Was it Dalipa? Uh, Dua Lipa. Dua Lipa. Dua, Dua Lipa. Yeah, I saw the hey, Tyra. I knew Tyra was going to know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but him dating... You know, Dua Lipa mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. that black women were surprised that he dated, that he wasn't dating a black woman mm -hmm. since he's very, you know, pro black pro with black. the black community. Yeah. So there's been a lot of this colorism, light skin kind of conversation in the black community. And I That's thought this episode was right on time. It kind of fell right on in with that. That is very funny. Cause yeah. I mean, these, these, these episodes were written like two, three yes, years ago. Right. Um, so that's, yeah. that's, that's crazy. Uh, right. we, 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 yeah. What you guys think about uh, Elle's question there, as far as the, that, that conversational piece with light skinnedness in the community. <laughs> yeah. It's a sensitive one. Um, yeah. I haven't talked about that spe specifically. Uh, on my channel, I'll go ahead and drop this. I'm so late. Ty was telling me to do a review on this movie for the longest, but I do plan on still reviewing Passing. That was mm -hmm. my next yeah. that covers yeah. that as well. Mm -hmm. um, but this is news to me. I did not know about the NBA draft thing or Trevor Noah. I mean, I don't know what Trevor Noah is. I didn't know he was married to a white woman. Uh, he not, he's just dating. Just dating around. Right. Yeah, 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 okay. yeah. yeah. To be is this, to be honest with you. Um, Look, I, as far as interracial dating, you know, do what you do. Yeah. Um, love who you love. I will never judge. Me personally, I will only date a black woman. Seriously, I, I just can't. I just can't see myself marrying somebody else. And sometimes when I do see a black man, you know, um, dating or marrying a white woman, it does kind of make me tilt my head a little bit, you know. But again, I'm not going to judge anybody. But when it comes to somebody that's mixed race. Uh, like Noah himself, I am. I don't have a problem with it, um, even if he is still aware and conscious of race, racism, white supremacy, and you know he specifically used the term because um, he's from South Africa. I forgot. I can't think of it. It's the same thing as right. Yeah, I know what you mean. I can't yeah, remember. Um, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, but um, I, I don't know. I, I have to look into it. That's definitely something I want to, um, you know, gain more knowledge on. Um, especially with me doing that review, but yeah, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta jump in there. Yeah, no, Passing was, a, was mm -hmm. an excellent film, and I didn't even know. And I'm a big fan of uh, Rebecca Hall. I didn't even know she was her mom's black, her dad's mm -hmm. mom. I did not mm -hmm. even know that. Um, yeah. But yeah, Tyra, I mean, your thoughts on the on the on the, on the conversation? Not I mean, much, of course, it's a much like, bigger conversation. But just your thoughts. I just love <laughs> how these conversations and these topics come, and just because of you know social media and TikTok, it's just like, oh, oh God, who knew? Like. This has always yeah. been here. Like, I think it's more present now and discussed and a, a couple more eyes on it now because, of course, we have all these different platforms and the internet. Like, colorism, like, this has always been here. Like, I, I'm just, I'm absolutely not surprised the whole NBA draft, like, 
Yeah. Sure. You know, like, <laughs> this is what it is. Like, I don't really choose to just dip my toe in that because I, I'm just, I'm just never surprised by anything. Like, I just know my preference and what I want to do and who I want to live with and see in the morning. And it's blackface. So that, that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> I just comment here about Bucky. Black women typically uh, love black men, and black men typically love women. <laughs> and and you know they they gave uh they gave Jordan Peele a hard time a, a couple of years ago. Yeah, uh, yeah. Because even he, wh who are we talking about? Earn. Uh, Earn. Yeah, he's, yeah. He's, he's, he's he has a yeah. His, his you know, is, he, uh, I think Asian. Mm -hmm. I, I, he he when he popped up, he got drug online for dating a white woman. But I remember he, like. I was I was defended of him because I was like, wait a minute, y'all black women didn't want him until he was popping. You know, he he was that you know awkward. That. Uh, no. I, 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 I made down that hill because he because it was a lot of the the awkward black man that like, I'm just saying I know exactly what that man looks like and but and from my experience, black women are not checking for that Absolutely type of black not. man. Kind of they, nerdy they black, black guys. Not. I, I had a coworker in college. <laughs> I had a coworker in college. He loved black women but mm -hmm. no black woman would ever date him now he hung out with more white people but he was like be black women just were not it for me you know and i was like i, I understand i mean i understand why they wouldn't but i understand. <laughs> i mean he was a, a cool lot, dude <laughs> but, a lot of black women aren't approached just because of the thought process of what they think the expectations may be or just assuming like just because i'm this way a uh, black woman wouldn't be interested in me and there may be you know a couple that you know maybe when you tried they did you know like oh you know that's not my thing but i think it's probably that's what's shown in the forefront mostly but it's a lot of black women who have yep. interest in a man who isn't you know particularly everybody's not looking for you know a, a thug or oh you know right. a certain kind of man like oh he's not you know he's not enough whatever for me but i think that that's kind of a cop out when people like to say like well you know they never was like no a lot of these <laughs> men once they get you know to a certain level they gravitate you know towards that granted in these circles there are you know majority of white women are different racially and being whatever all those other yeah. other colors but you know once you you get you know a certain amount of money you gravitate a lot that we see like to a, a certain kind of woman and that and sadly that just you know repeats the cycle and that it's almost like a um a statement piece like I'm I'm really on. I'm a white woman, you know, I got my money, right. you know, every everything's okay. But just to for a lot of these men, I think it's more so just a preference. I don't think it's just, well, you know, <clears throat> you know, black women want me. Like, no, I'm sure I'm definitely almost positive a black woman wanted you. Where did you go to get the black women? Mm -hmm. I see. I see. L agrees. I see. I see. You you agree you with up there. Okay. I got. You. I, I just feel like. You know, <laughs> if a if a guy is like, man, I can't. Every time I go up to a black woman, they don't never want to be. But if he comes like, hi, may I? How may I interest you in a, a lovely walk? I'm gonna be like, are you trying to kill me, sir? Just tell me now. Like, just give me a heads up so I can prepare myself. You yes. know what I mean? <laughs> but on the flip flop of that, it's like if you went up to two black women and they both turn you down, not everybody, every black not woman. Not every right, 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 right. Like that, you know how many nerdy black women there are in the world? Oh gosh. Yeah, I am. I'm hey. right here. Give okay. me a nerd yeah. all day, every day. Yeah. Okay, Tyra. Tell them what happened when B, we, we talked about it. Bro, man. It's hard to find. I would say, the, B, we uh, talked about it. It's hard. Yo, it's hard to find. I went bro. live yesterday. No, was it yesterday, Tyra? Yes, it was. Yesterday. Mm -hmm. And I went through my mm -hmm. dating app matches, mm -hmm. throw the whole phone in a garbage can. You understand me? Tyra was lighting them up, okay? <laughs> <laughs> because it's not, you know, you can't lump everybody in. But yeah. I will say this, though. In my neck of the woods, going back to passing, mm. that's like a very much a cultural thing here. Like mm. still to this day, to this day in 2022, we have people who will pass for white. Um, mm. And we know good and well that they, their mama and their daddy are black. And mm. we have people here that will like, like for me, for example, my best friend, her, she was very fair skinned in high school. Well, she wasn't my best friend. That was my girl though. But mm. she, her grandmother would not let me in her house. Because oh, I was damn. too dark to go in her house in high school. Uh, this was in the 2000s. Yeah. Right. Um, and it's still very much prevalent. Like I have cousins, like my actual first and second cousins who live in California. Mm -hmm. I know that they're black. They know that they're black. But in California, they're racially ambiguous. Mm -hmm. And it just they just marry a white man mm -hmm. and their children are white. Mm -hmm. And their children will be 
white. That's just white. how it goes. Right. This day. So passing was very interesting for me because like down here we call it passe blanc. Like you pass for white. Mm. Um, but you know, colorism is very much a thing. But B, I'm gonna have to just stop you there because don't tell your friend that he just might have been lame, my guy. Like, I don't know. <laughs> like you can be a nerd and not be lame, right? Yeah. Or maybe he just, you know, maybe he had a I don't know, but it's different. It's a topic because in a bunch yeah. of circles, because I, I love black men. A lot of black men thought I was boring, thought I was lame. So because I'm not the one, I don't go crazy. What? Crazy. what? Crazy. Yes, me. Make I don't you know, make any I'm not, sense. You know, super social. <laughs> yeah. I don't go out to the club. Mm -hmm. I'm I'm not like I hate clubs. Like I, that's not my vibe. Like I'm different. And like a lot of yeah. people find that like uh that, that's not that's not my thing. I need a girl with a little off. Like, all right, bye. <laughs> I, don't, I don't yeah. I don't know none of that. Uh, but I was like, dirty guys here, they don't they don't like me because I don't want I don't want anybody that's like super rough around the edges. I don't I'm I'm cool on that. I'm not trying to do all that, but I like to go to a little bop. I want to go bop every once in a while in the lounge, but I also want to cosplay on a Tuesday and just eat dinner <laughs> as Mr. Knight. I don't man, know. Like, well, saying, like, we, were, we was talking about this yesterday, man. I was just like, when I was growing up, I, I got made fun of because I like Dragon Ball Z. You know what I'm yeah. saying? <laughs> and now it's all over the place, you know? Yeah. So it's, yeah. My it's baby, different. getting he getting lit up. He's nine and he loves like um, anime and, and it's like in his mind, like he just want to talk about Luffy all the time. And he want to talk about, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like uh, Demon Slayer all the time. Yeah. And all these other kids is like, you know, they like, you yeah. know, doing the little dances and yeah. TikTok and stuff. And he want to talk about Dragon Ball. So he feels he very, you know, but I'm trying to prepare him so that he can have a, a mix of both. So he can mm. like what he likes and still right, not right. be ostracized. Right. Um, but I, you know, like what you like, bro. Like yeah. it just, it starts at home. You have to inject that self love because yeah. my, da my daughter is mixed. She looks absolutely nothing like me. She is just now like 12 in her teens starting to look in the essence of blackness. Like it just wasn't there. <laughs> so I remember like when we started off because she didn't know any better when she was younger, she used to be embarrassed by me. Like if I would come to like a teacher's mm. meeting and be like, oh, mm -hmm. like Ma, why you have to come here in front of my, my friends? Like my friends are white and you know, Next or whatever they they mm. think I'm them like oh but now you know it's just like in anywhere I don't care where we move where we at especially if it's any function where her friends or school somebody who knows her and hasn't seen me and they go oh well who's this like that's this is your mom yes my mom that's, that's my mom that's what's up I mean I love children but children are just they can be just trash <laughs> sometimes man. I, who is that? Oh, oh, you have to like feel that. that that at home. So I make sure she know like it's not all about even if you are fair skin. Like we're yeah. we're black, and you yeah. know you have love for me as your mom just as much as you may have love for your dad who's not black. Yeah, that's what's up. <laughs> this is I gotta, in, in, you know my I have boys. I'm a boy mom, mm. and so from a little time like as soon as they were old enough to go to school, we have affirmations we say in the morning, mm. and a part of our affirmations is black is powerful. Like mm -hmm. all black is insert whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, it used to be beautiful, but then when they got older, they were like, Ugh, beautiful. Ugh. <laughs> so now we change it to powerful, right? But I want them to know that. Like, yeah. I, and I, I, everywhere I go, I'm always like extolling how awesome it is to be black. Like, look at mama's skin. Look at your skin. Look how I awesome love it. it is. I love it. Look how, look how, look at them curls, boy. Them waves mm -hmm. is spinning, boy, and gassing them up and like making them excited to be black. Yeah. Um, and hopefully they'll bring somebody home that looks like them. You know what I'm saying? And understand how awesome if she that can't use is. your comb. You know what I'm saying? Tommy <laughs> from Martin say if you if she can't use your comb, don't bring yeah. her home. So I love it. you know. I love it. And this is listen, this is why this panel, like I said, I love that they were able to get into this conversation. This show kind of brings it. Not at all. This is literally the conversation. I mean, I, and I, this is why I got this photo on the screen is and I don't think it was a subtle little hint towards uh Uncle Riley. You know, it was you talked about it, L and Tyra earlier that it was. I don't think it's coincidence that he passed up the black woman and the, and the, the this white woman quickness, right? This white woman <laughs> came and kind of swooped through. I mean, we talked about the whole NBA thing. I mean, you know that that goes back from. I bet you those dads that had their sons at the NBA night, they were probably athletes, and it's a whole conversation about you know white women, not to sound racist, but they target black men uh, for yeah. success. You know, that was a whole 
get out was that whole allegory yeah. about that with it Alex. should be no man. reason why we have to hold, and why people hold savannah james and king james yep. on a pedestal on like pedestal. we got yep. one he's yep. still got right like, that, that's just absolutely sad yep <laughs> i agree i agree but hey this this that, that did not derail the conversation that added more to the conversation <laughs> so i'm glad we we that we derailed into that um let's see here Moving on to just, I guess we talked about the mall. We talked about the conversation at the studio. So I guess bringing it back to the studio and just kind of a, I want to toss it to you, B, uh, this relationship between Ern and Al, they don't want to end up like their parents, end up like their family and the drama. But um, what do we see for them in the future of this show? Are they going to still be working together when Ern goes off to LA? Is Al going to be with them? Um, what do you see of the future of these two characters ending up like their family or being something different and going through that back door and leaving that behind um i don't know elliot this it kind of scares me though um yeah. i have no idea i can only put i can't the thing is i don't i don't see them um working together mm -hmm. or keeping close contact with each other i want them to but even this this image right here and i think we talked about it the last week or the week before just kind of how some people naturally grow apart yeah and uh i, I can see that happening yeah um i don't want it to uh yeah. but i just don't you know i mean they're they just have different paths you know they're and like we all of us they're just like not on some hey you know kick let's kick it or whatever they got to do what they got to do and they um i don't know maybe starting to have different interests and just what they want out of life mm -hmm. um i don't know though man i really can't put my finger on it I hope they stick together because I mean they 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 broke bread together. They they've accomplished these goals that I don't think any of them really knew that they would be able to accomplish together. Now, granted, they were gone. I don't know. And again, this we talked about earlier. Be as far as like if we're gonna ever get any tie-ins to what happened to the mom because we know that they didn't talk after the funeral. I can't remember yeah. if Ern went to the funeral or he didn't go to the funeral. He, did. that was, he, he didn't. Did. Okay, okay. No. So I mean, they had moments where they didn't talk for a while, but I, I hope they don't end on that note. But Tyra, your, your thoughts on where this relationship? has been going, will go, and will they end up being different from their from their family? I definitely do not think that they are going to stick together, unfortunately. God. Like, they are drifting already. Like, they've been drifting. They, I feel like they were drifting from the very beginning. The only reason they even linked up, it was just for the more of the career. This wasn't like, oh, we're family. We're going to get... Remember how Earn had to work so hard just to convince? Like, he didn't even want Earn to be, you know, a part of, you know, what he had going on. Like, he had that already, that little disdain and resentment because, you know, when I was going through this with my mom and your aunt, like, where were you? You, you, you know, you weren't around. He kind of felt like he left him hanging. So, and I, I don't think we've ever heard them, like, really just just really talk about that. But I think that yeah. was really hard for Al. And when we met them initially, they were already, you know, distant. And Al was just like, oh, you're just coming around now because, mm -hmm. you know, there's some hype around, you know, the song or, you know, whatever. You're coming around for so for something that's going to benefit you, not just as, you know, my cousin. Where were you when I needed you? And with how they're going and how determined that Earn is to be Mr. Moneybags or whatever, <laughs> mm -hmm. I, I just really don't see them, them sticking together, unfortunately. I feel like Al will be still sticking in areas you know i feel like they'll be more you know closer yeah, than anything friends. which you know happens a whole lot where you are really close and family with somebody who isn't your family more than you know your own blood but yeah. i think um i love the the whole you know the thing where he's just like you know i was just playing with you and it's just like i don't want to end up like them and i feel like they have been drifting for a long time because we we don't see them just hang out anymore we don't see them just when right. they link up it's like on business or they're talking always working about, he said last week always yeah. working Yep. Even, you know, last episode when he tried, you know, hey, are, are you okay? And it's just like, oh, I got, I got, he's always on the go and has something to do. If it wasn't right. for, you know, the whole <laughs> situation with Auntie Jean, it, it would have still been, you know, business as usual. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't, I don't see them sticking together at all. Yeah. Elle, am I the only one that's hopeful that these two uh, cousins <laughs> will, will, you know, take over and, and stay together and, and, and continue to make money together? I think, um, I don't know. I think that they're, I don't think they're going to like break ties and never connect again or never see each other or talk to each other again. I think their mm -hmm. relationship is going to evolve because mm -hmm. their relationship has always been in flux since we yeah. met them. Because when we first see them, Al used to be mean to earn, baby. <laughs> Al used to make earn, earn 
Earn, yeah, earn his respect yeah, back. That, yeah, that money. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but you know, over time, it softened, right? Because they used to be like really, really close when they were younger. Yeah, the football episode. Yeah. It was one of those like <laughs> you go off to college, and I'm staying here, and I got a job, and you know, we just kind of go on two different paths, and I got a different set of friends than you, and we start to hear about you know what you know earn experience and in college and. It might have been one of those things, you know, you just kind of go off on different paths. There's no love loss per se, but mm -hmm. you just don't link up as much and y'all don't have as much in common anymore. And I think that might happen again. Their relationship might evolve again um, mm -hmm. because, you know, earned them, we got a job. So is that does that mean he not doing as much with Paperboy as he used to because Paperboy's career is slowing down? I don't I don't know. Name me a Paperboy song. Do it. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Mucking. Can't, 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 Mucking. I mean, okay. All right. Give me another one. Give me, give me some. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We don't know. I don't know. So, you know, he's in the <laughs> studio, but he's not, I don't know. Anyway, but, you know, I think their relationship is going to evolve and hopefully, you know, Earn, I want Earn to be happy too, because Earn is, Earn might be more depressed than, um, then Al. Al, I think right. the only one that's not depressed is Darius, because obviously we know <laughs> yeah, the other one. I think Darius is either too high to be depressed, or he literally is just as happy as he can be. He's above it all. No <laughs> I don't know. He's right. above it all. Maybe I don't think uh, Al does he know what happened to, or is that the first time he shared exactly what happened to him? You know, with the therapist, does the family know in depth what happened to him? In, I don't in think so. I doubt it. You know, yeah, maybe, I don't think maybe so. he shares that. Like a then, error. He's not yeah. like a communicator. It's not like he's gonna sit down and be like, "Yeah, man, let me tell you what happened at, right. at college and how it made me feel." Right. Maybe it'll make a difference and break a bridge and maybe they'll have a kumbaya moment of, oh, yeah. I didn't know, you know, that's how you felt and that's what happened. Maybe. Because Al doesn't doesn't give me like a, you know, he can be an a, a asshole at times. Like, man, mm -hmm. you going to therapy, your stupid self, you crazy. You know, but when he was in the funeral with uh, Blue Blood, he was very communicative and very open. Like, you know, mm -hmm. he really impacted me and he was having really thoughtful conversation with the lady. To a stranger. Yeah. Yeah. yeah to with a stranger. So, you, you know, he has to. that in him. Like, he right. has the ability to do that. And I think he could do that with Earn. But I don't think either one of them will let their guard down enough to do that, especially if all Earn did was say he was going to therapy and right. Al, like cackled at, <laughs> at the thought. So, you know, I don't see them being communicative in that way. Gotcha. Gotcha. Well, I got that. We talked about it earlier, L, and I got the, so this is the kid's face. Let's put a little memory, uh, muscle memory. So that's, that's the kid uh, who is being a, a straight up fool to our uh, boy Riley. And I mentioned it earlier uh, when me and L were talking that, uh, and I think uh, Tyra mentioned it, I was hopeful, hoping and praying that we were going to get Isaiah Whitlock say this to the kid when he actually left. Yeah, I took it easy. I was hoping for it. I don't know why that we didn't get I it. I don't either. I don't I, know why. And they knew we were looking for it. They, they knew it. They know. That's his catchphrase. I mean, he even did it in the five bloods. With he, other did. he always <laughs> does it. That's his thing. Uh, which I don't know. Maybe what someone said, I think they said they saw him in the trailer again uh, with that same hat. So I don't know if he'll be back later this season. Uh, but as I'm going through it, and again, we talked about it, B and Tyra and L, but again, just to kind of reiterate our thoughts on just the disrespectful uh, scene there, starting with you, Tyra, just that kid. If So I, and another thing, too, and, and we talked about TikTok and Instagram, I always feel so upset when I see people either get into a fight or doing something crazy and someone's just recording that recording. and not helping them or doing something about it. That that frustrates me more than the actual incident on, on, at hand. But just any more thoughts on this, Tyra, on this scene and that disrespectful kid? First of all, I didn't know how viral he thought he could go just based off of that pimp hat. Like, it's, it's a hat with a cross on it. Like, exactly. no, nobody was going to be giving you standing ovations right. and, you know, making – it just wasn't that. I just I just really hated it. I hated the entire scene. I hated him invading his space. And, like, yeah. I just was – I was kind of nervous at that moment because, you know, he rolled up the, the other kids. You know, it was like he had a whole little game with him. And if you're this abrasive yeah. about me not wanting to stop and give you shine and give you a picture – what if he would have said no and just tried to leave? Like, it's so much stuff happening in malls now. I was like, please don't let this be one of those moments. Like, it was just terrible. Like, I already knew just, it's just that generational connect, disconnect and that disrespect just repeating. Like, nobody should have the time their life around 
oh, when these, you know, 20 somethings are, you know, under 20 is going to be at the mall. I, 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 I can't be there. I can't do it. I, I need to be here and be in and out by a certain time. Like you just really see how much that bothered him and like yeah. all the way rolling over into the restaurant. I hated the entire scene. I wanted him to say she and like hit him, but you know, I just, I just wanted him to just hit him, but he, he, he you know, do what he needs to do because it's just like, not only are you here and you're invading my space, but you got all of these, all of these little flunkies behind you. And I'm not trying to be that old guy in the mall that, right. Oh. You know, got hurt star. because you know of this knucklehead. Let me just yeah. take this picture. I love how he looked off, like uh, okay, <laughs> like yeah. yeah. But he, you know, he thought he was doing something with that. But I don't even think it was just about uh, the picture. I thought I thought it was more so about him making a scene. Like it just felt like he was trying because everybody started looking. It was like mm -hmm. this sense of embarrassment and just, everybody stopped what they were doing. Yeah, and, yeah. stop. Like what's going on over here? And I'm, I'm sure you know. <sighs> didn't, I didn't pay attention, but I'm sure somebody pulled out their phone because everybody's always looking for their next viral moment mm -hmm. to post. Mm -hmm. Like it's 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 a terrible it's a terrible thing. I have yet to had a moment where I felt like oh I need to bring out my phone and record this. Like right. what? Absolutely not. <laughs> what about you, B? I know you say you if you uh the screen if it wasn't that barrier that you would have punched a kid right through the TV screen, man. But your <laughs> thoughts on this. And, and, and again, just to kind of, I've never been around like a, a situation that will require people to pull their phones out uh, as far as, you know, viral sensations. But my question for you, B, is, is what's your thoughts when you see people just sitting there watching this kind of ridiculousness? Um, it just depends on who is doing the ridiculousness stuff, who, who is acting crazy, um, because some people I would just sit there and watch and pull out my phone. And if I had popcorn, yeah, I'd pull yeah, it yeah, out you. you see a Karen uh, at a Starbucks wilding out, you know. Yeah, I'm gonna like, <laughs> ha, 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 ha. you know, just, you know, like uh, just, yeah, you know what I'm saying? But if um if if it's you know some black people, you know, I'm I I definitely have a, a different you know way of going about it. You know, I may have to step in, intervene, or throw a chair, throw a cone or a, a, a wet floor sign or something like that, you know. Um, and I, I, just as a man, you gotta, you, you kind of have to like weigh it out, you know. Like, okay, am I gonna die for a stranger? Mm. You know, uh, and I, that may sound cruel, but sometimes that's yeah. the expectation from people. And yeah. you know, I just don't think that's completely realistic. I mean, I'm not gonna let a child get beat on or stomped. I'm definitely gonna jump in with the cape in that situation. But you have to kind of weigh it. But specifically about this scene right here, man, I'm gonna just keep it short and sweet. I hated it; it made me uncomfortable, and I really wanted um, the I, w I really wanted uh, Isaiah to go off and physically. Um, and you know, I, I would have um, you know created a GoFundMe to bail him out of jail <laughs> and, and all of that. But I, I really wanted him to get physical because that that was just out of line. I agree. L, your your thoughts on this scene here? And any and if someone actually, I don't even think about. It. I guess they were wearing red hats i don't know if yeah. there's any extra meaning or layers to that yeah i don't know but i know um ml russell i don't you 53 i one thing i can tell you for sure without a shadow of a doubt people from that generation were scrapping they were oh, yeah. fighting Some like if they had a tussle right. yep. they were gonna tussle tussle mm -hmm. it wasn't mm -hmm. they weren't about to get a gun it wasn't no taser and ain't no billy club and nothing you they were gonna fight <laughs> And nine times out of ten, it's a muscle memory because what I I got just don't understand like how you can put yourself in a position like that when you have no idea, you don't know anything about that situation. Mm -hmm. You going into it blind. So what if what if what if Riley was a jujitsu master and just karate chopped you in your head? And I just hated that you know it was in the in the food court. You know yeah. everybody's Everybody, yeah. in the mm -hmm. food court. <clears throat> everybody's there and it was like purposefully done to embarrass this stranger for no reason and I think that the boy you know a lot of times you know that was a bullying situation a lot of times he was like look at this old ass man he ain't gonna do nothing he got a hat on he probably got bad knees I'm gonna get in there. you know like that kind of thing right. but again you never you never know which is why I kind of you know feel like what B was saying like I'm, I'm not going to put myself I see people do trash stuff all the time all mm -hmm. of the time. I'm going to mind my business, unfortunately, because I'm not going to die, okay? Right. But right. I have taken somebody in the neck and ran off because it was just necessary to do. Like, I've can, done that. Can we get a little bit of that little story? You have, you have to wait, yeah. you know, because th it's just like the wild, wild west out here a lot of times. And, you yeah. know, and things are just right, and it just sits on my soul when I see things that are 
occurring mm -hmm. that are wrong and that you know are unnecessary and it's turmoil inside you, girl, all the time. Yeah. Man, like, you can't you can't even do that no more. Like I see, I saw the comments like I'm 53 and I wish a motherfucker would. Like you can't even do that. Like now, as you say, like our generation, it was very much so yeah. Friday. You 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 lose some, you win some. Like we were yeah. on fighting. Like everybody wasn't afraid to take an ass whooping or fight. Right. Like mm -hmm. all they know how to do is shoot somebody. Like yeah, but like, that's why I said I take somebody in the neck and ran because I wasn't gonna get yeah, caught because I, I knew that right. I wasn't supposed to. Do, you can't do that but i knew i couldn't let that ha it was a like a guy was beating up on a girl just oh, okay. in the middle of like a football game parking lot mm. oh, I, it's crowded i'm gonna tell you you're gonna get, I'm gonna get out you know, like what b said about the karens and jumping in like i hate this culture of the viral thing and just standing there recording like it desensitizes us to a lot of you know what you know how severe the scenario might be and people think it's com comical to record a Karen don't like all that like, right. that that is like the last thing that I find appealing or funny like I think is absolutely <laughs> gross like bitch yeah. get up I'm sorry get up lady <laughs> I, 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 I struggle with this daily uh, I remember a, a year or two ago there was a video online of I think it was a white man that hit a black woman and there was somebody in the car recording it and mm -hmm. They were mad at the person that recorded it. Like, okay, why don't you go step in? Well, they had like a I, dealership, a car dealership or something like that. I can't remember. Right. I remember it was a night. And, and 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 it was so much. Um, it, it was just so like it was so many comments online calling the man a coward because he, you know, he didn't step in. I, we don't even know if this man was 135 pounds, but you know, still. But and I'm gonna loop this back in. Like I, 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 I once asked my mom about ten years ago. I was like, "Hey, mom, has there ever been a time where you and dad were dating where he had to step in and defend your honor, you mm -hmm. know, physically?" And she's like, "Luckily, no." And you know, we pray that that never happens. Yeah. But going going back to the the man that was recording, I also have heard in the news of certain situations to where a man was beating a woman at a gas station. A man went over to help, and the abuser. Uh, put out a gun and shot the person that was trying to help. I've, I've, I've heard of that twice in my life. Mm. And so what do you do? Mm. Like, I mean, you want to you want to defend people or just people in general, especially a black woman. Yeah. But at the same time, this is a stranger. And I, I've seen two cases where uh, somebody died, you know, and but they try to be a hero. I mean, this, this is not the movies. And so right. I, I don't I mean. I, I question myself, like, okay, what am what would I do? And I'm thinking, okay, maybe if I have pepper spray or something, I can run over and pepper spray them. I don't have to do that. Say do the L. That taser that and that pepper, pepper spray. spray. Yeah, yeah, yeah or, or something like that. I mean, like, if something pops off, I mean, I'm confident that I can possibly hold my own to a degree but at the same time man there's a lot of people out there men and women that are stronger than me that will probably put me down that are in much physical shape i'm i i sit here and think about the different scenarios on how i get it okay maybe i can blow my horn real hard and startle them to get mm. help the victim get away or try to bump them with my car or something like that you know run them over but then i'm gonna go to jail now you got a case right, right. <laughs> so, like, it, yeah. it, it's just like i think about this constantly and yeah we talked about it two weeks ago i mean we in the south everybody here has a gun there's a gun and everybody right. big mm. people small people men women boys girls fat skinny everybody has a gun and if you are a perceived threat they can shoot you yeah. and it stands your ground over here it's, it's, so it's just um i don't like that i have to think about stuff like that and so yeah. i was thinking about all of that during this scene right here of just like you know what, what what's going on I mean, how, how will yeah. it play out how will it be perceived in the news the social media etc and it just makes me yeah i went to the to the range like three months ago um and when i went there there were no lanes available you know mm -hmm. why because the silver shooters were there you know who the silver shooters were I don't old know. people with guns Man. old people with guns it was Ready like a club up. of old like i think they were like 60 and up mm -hmm. and they were pra like practicing mm -hmm. so literally people have guns here like that's just a part of the culture unfortunately um but while you were talking b you know what i thought about the first time i realized that it might not be a good idea to step in was stand by me. You remember on Stand by Me back in the day? Oh, oh the movie, yeah. And, and, he, uh, yeah. and then how they yeah. did the little wrap up story in the yeah. end and how he was always trying to make peace and he did that and somebody stabbed him. Someone stabbed him, yeah. 
And I just was like, it might not benefit you to step in. Yeah, you might have to just find a business and say a prayer. When I say step in, I mean go, you know, hey, security, excuse me, over there. And then you have the mall security and flashlights and flash the light on people. It's no mall security. They don't have no guns, no tasers or nothing. Yeah, I, I, I definitely throw something though. Like, I, if, <laughs> if there is something in sight, I can launch. Hey, hey, stop it. Stop. <laughs> I'm sorry, but I'm you know, 20. My, I, 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 I can't even too much. I just took it. You know, I, 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 I'll call somebody who can take your heel off. <laughs> Shazam! Um, yeah, no, nah, it's uh, and I mean to be fair too. I mean we got these phones. Sometimes I could be using evidence in the court of law, right? If you're recording the, the incidents, and if they didn't die, maybe they can uh, thank you later uh, for filming all that stuff. But uh, <laughs> wrapping up this episode, as we see the family at dinner, and also L two, um, just to, it, and I look too because I want to make sure because I'm like I think L might be right with the dude at the mall, but I think we can uh. confirm that it is a different guy. He's looks oh, speaking of light skinned. I think he's light skinned. If I'm not mistaken, uh, yeah, he is light skinned, which might I don't know play into the whole theme of uh, light skin has been yelled at, at the end of the episode. I know he had on a red shirt. The in red the mall. shirt, yeah. Yep. And I was like, I know, I know you lying, because guess what? I'm going to the manager. I'm going to the regional branch. I'm going to the president, CEO. I'm going to everybody's table and telling them what a trash service right is. Don't tip and, them. Yeah. Don't tip. Right. Oh. <laughs> Listen, that that kid had it coming though, because he, what uh, you laughing at? What happened? I'm still I laugh. Laugh. The last who was talking about. I'm sorry. Oh, jumping in. I'm still talking about throwing chairs. Throwing chairs. Oh, at him. No. <laughs> Throwing cough drops at him. Trying to get him. <laughs> Cut it out. Uh, but no, going back to this kid, he had it coming though. Because I, I ain't gonna lie. Listen, man, when you don't get the breadsticks, especially you go to a Olive Garden or a, you know the biscuits at Red Lobster. Mm. It, that's another level of disrespect, you know, when I, you don't I get the bread. I've been to Red Lobster, and I always hear about what? these. Red Lobster. Mm -mm. Had a biscuits. Get the biscuits. Huh? It never yeah. dawned on me to go to Red Lobster to eat, like, frozen seafood. Well, I mean, you, I better say, yeah, you from New Orleans, where y'all got the best yeah, seafood in the world. Like, so it's just like. go in the back and, that's and like go going fishing uh, and then grab the shrimp and then bring it to the restaurant. Like, it's there you not, go. So that's it never occurred to me to go in there. But should I go, though? No, no, no. Yeah, I, I was over now back in the, the day, bad. real yeah. lobster, like fast food, like those joints oh. were the thing back in the day. Like today, mm. it's all nasty. It's this is nasty. Oh. I like how we all universally yeah. said no, no. no. <laughs> the biscuits good though. The biscuits still hit. I had some real lobster biscuits at a friend's house the other day. They still pretty good. They're still. Pretty I will good. throw down for some Texas Roll House bread though. That, oh, oh, yeah, that Texas Roll House right. bread. We gon' and they 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 started to shrink it down. They used to like pile it in the basket. Now they get oh, no. the whole rolls. Oh yeah, we're basket. in a recession. So we're in a recession. Get inflation. Right. You, you get a whole bag. Right. I yeah. see y'all at this table. Y'all get one roll per right. Month. And then the <laughs> butter is not as like. Dark as it used to be, it's just it's Different. still it's still slap, and I still yeah. go to wall for that bread, but it's just mm -hmm. it's a little less than it used to be. Yeah, but that's, that's the only bread I, I know. I, I was with Earn's mama, like I want my. I was bread. just about to like, bring that up. Yep. <laughs> right. I was just yeah, about to ask with boxing up the bread you know, because I was gonna get it fine. anyway at the table. Yeah, that's I don't know. That was weird. Like Ern is that's like crazy. he's he know Ern even came up now. It's like you know it's just bread. I'm like no, I nah. need my money. It's principalities in this. It's, it's Give the me my principality bread. of the matter. Yeah. I want I want my bread. I might not even eat it once I take it out of here, but exactly. I made for it. I want exactly. my bread. That's right. And it's not your business what I do with it anyway. Box it up so I can do, I might throw it away as soon as I leave it. That's not your business. <laughs> Just Give me my bread. Oh, and and little does he know, this is the uh, this is the Liam Neeson of of, of uh, daughters out there. He, she will take you out. She will kidnap you. And you will never be seen again. Yep. So you, you don't want to mess with her. Look at that <laughs> smile, by the way. I mean, she is, she, <laughs> go ahead and get me the bread with a smile. She, like she can make some good bread herself, she don't she? She really does. Uh, I, so I guess the question around the panel, starting with you, L, should he, should the bread have been given to them? And have you ever encountered a mom or a dad embarrassing you uh, as Ern felt at this moment at a restaurant? I definitely the bread should have been there first of all. True, that true. the bread should have been given prior to, and you knew you know bread. You know you're supposed to get a bread now. Nah, you over here tripping. Mm -hmm. Give me my bread. Um, but I haven't had like my mom or dad or anybody. I haven't had an experience where they. Um, embarrass me because 
of like asking for too much or being like, I want a salad with everything on the side with dressing. On the, now, it's not like that. Mm -hmm. But I do remember specifically we went to a restaurant and the lady was not a fan of the melanin in our skin. And mm -hmm. she was throwing all our food on the table like she oh, like she like put all the menus in one stack instead of putting them on everybody's plate and or everybody's space and then she was like what, what can i get y'all to drink mm. anything else y'all want appetizer? and my mom had, had enough and she it was it was it was like it was a boiling point and my mom is very you know mm, but she had came unglued and that i don't even know where we were um, and I was like, damn, we about to go to jail. Like, what do I do if my mama goes to jail? Cause she done beat up the waitress in the place. Like, I don't, I don't even know. I'm not even prepared for this situ situation, but, um, yes, the bread should have came. Um, and she wasn't asking for too much and it's your job, sir. Do your job, sir. And don't be looking for me for like no crazy tip because you asking me, I got to go check with the manager for the bread. That made me mad, Jay. I got to go get the manager, manager involved. <laughs> Get out of here. Have some bread. Give me the what about you, B, have you ever encountered this uh, situation with the parents at, before? And, and more importantly, uh, the bread, man. It, it's just no questions asked. Yeah, no questions asked. The bread should have came. Right. I would have um, I would have popped off like the, the father did as well. Just bring mm -hmm. the damn bread. That doesn't make any sense. But no, my parents have never, ever embarrassed me out. Uh, we don't get embarrassed for stuff like that. We, we will, if necessary, we will cause a scene, but we never have to. You right. know, my mom, my mom has, you know, Jedi mind tricks. She's able to convince them to accept 10 to 15 year expired coupons. I'm serious. But with her, I learned never take no for an answer. You know, right. I remember when I was little, I maybe I was like seven or eight years old. We was at Bennigan's. She sw I swear to God, she used the coupon. It, it had to be expired 10 years ago. Bennigan. And, Bennigan. And, and, Go yeah, back. And, and she was able to do it. <laughs> And so, yeah, yeah, no shame in our game over here. And, That's and what's West. up. That's what's up. Uh, Tyra, bread, no bread. Uh, and uh, you I have mean, a parents' story. I mean, y'all got some nice parents because uh, <laughs> your parents are wilding out. <laughs> my mom is definitely that. This glass looks a little shoddy. Way. There's some on my silverware. Like, can you bring <laughs> me some warm rolls? Put mm -hmm. a little lemon on the side of my glass. Like, we are definitely those people. Like, I'm a strong believer in like service. Like there's already in some yeah. places, like I, I hate going out to eat because the quality of food is just, you know, a downside. Unless I'm going somewhere where I'm like, oh, we got to spend a couple hundred on this meal. There is not a guarantee that you're going to get great food, and great <laughs> service. So I am like, I am that person because, you know, it's, I, I'm very considerate of the waiter. I'm not rude, mm -hmm. but I want what I paid for. Right. <laughs> I want what I paid for. I can mm -hmm. be a little extra. Like, I don't want, I, the, the, yes, I am. And I'm also going to, because there's, you know, that little underlining when you go in certain restaurants, because people just assume black people don't tip. Yep. So <laughs> I know for one that I am going to tip and we tip very well, but within that we want proper service first of all my bread yeah. should have been on the table because that you know keeps my stomach calm until i mm -hmm. get the food and then i fill up halfway on bread so i can have some food to go for what i didn't eat on my plate i'm supposed to get my bread first like yep. it just showed like i was more like Where are you tripping like i don't care like you you know you got all y'all y'all sitting down there with your gucci and your louis vuitton on we ain't here we want our bread. I want what I paid for. Like, now, of course, Ern's dad, like, that was just sitting on his neck. Like, he'd go yeah. on his number. Right. Even though he was really so polite. Right. And, you know, it was like, well, I just, I just, we don't normally send bread. Boy, if you don't go get the damn bread, right. like, right. <laughs> just go get the bread. It's not going to kill you. It's not like you're going to be, what y'all have a bread count in the back. And it's the ratio. Right. Going to be We're low on bread today, you sir. Was, you were supposed to give it to us anyway. So you wouldn't be missing anything. Like, right. don't make a big deal out of nothing. It's just like, you know what? But go and get the damn bread, and I was not <laughs> mad at it. <laughs> and it's like a trigger for me too, because I'm very nice to people and cordial and, and polite. And if you're going out of your way to be rude to me or to not give me the service that you're giving everyone else, and I see that it's intentional, that makes me upset because I I, I really believe in making people feel good in my presence. Like I don't mm -hmm. ever want somebody to be uncomfortable or you know to not feel included. Um, so I do that with my servers. Like, hey, what's yeah. your name again? Oh, yep. thanks, Tyra. I appreciate yeah. it. Oh, yeah. thank you so much. Hope you have a good day. Yep. Like that kind of thing. That's me yep. all day. 
So if you're going to be rude to me or not give me the service that I need and I'm intentionally learning your name and asking you how your day was going, you've been busy when you what time you get off and you rude, girl, uh, sir, like, nah, that's Very why I got to draw the line. Bring Very me my bread and shut it up and get, bring your manager over here. Nah. And I'm going to call corporate when I get to my house. I might do it in a call. <laughs> right. You made me you mad. You ain't got to bring the manager. My family, we the ones. Can we get the manager, please? Get the manager. Like, get yep. the manager. Man. You just cook at home. Just cook at home. Stay at home. Stay at home. <laughs> Shout out to Zia. This is a uh, very funny, hypocritical of, of uh, Earn, the same guy. This is the same guy that had a whole plan, elaborate plan to humiliate the person that embarrassed him at the uh, airport. So, yeah, it is uh, very, very funny there. No, and you know, it just made me pick up, like, that just shows how, like, far Earn is. Remember Earn trying to, he was so mad because they didn't want to give me a water stuff. Of, Like, he couldn't get a kid's yeah. meal. <laughs> you remember like, that? And also, and um, like, I forgot when, he went out, when he went out with uh, Van to the date night and he wanted to use yeah. a $100 bill and they didn't yes. take the $100. They didn't and he was take so it. They didn't believe it was 100 the entire time. You sneaking, trying to get soda, trying getting this like I, yep. I'm getting soda in my water cup. Don't say nothing because they tripping about, about me that not being funny. Kid. I oh, how the money has risen. We got Earn money now, bougie, and we don't care if we get bread. Old Earn, he would have wanted his bread. Too. He would have wanted that bread. Earn is bougie because remember he left his call at Atlantic Station because he right, was like, I car. can't find it. Yeah. Just leave it there. <laughs> That's hilarious. Money's changes them. But shout out to Tyree and Rain Reloaded. Uh, have y'all ever experienced a food fight in a restaurant? Oh, gosh, um, no. a food fight at a, I don't think so, Tyrene. Uh, <laughs> Tyra, when uh, I was younger, I, I used wish. to be in a food fight in a cafeteria. You know how you see on the movies and everybody's oh, no, like, had some food food fight. Fight. like yeah. that yeah. kind of food fight? That was my dream when I was little. Never happened. Never but happened. I, you know, Oh no! It's a little, I would it's take a little wild advantage, and I have I all kinds of salt and pepper shakers, dishes <laughs> to go, napkins, all kinds of stuff. Don't have no food fighting the restaurant around me. I'm taking yeah. everybody's food to go. <laughs> yeah, I think the only time I've seen a, I've seen a fight at a like at school. Like I've seen two of my oh, best yeah, friends yeah. get into a fight, but I don't, I don't think I've ever been to a restaurant and there's been like a, a food fight or a fight at a restaurant. What about you, B? No, nah, man, I'm praying that I can see one one day before I die. <laughs> um, that, that's that's on my bucket list right there. Um, <laughs> All right, man, we're going to link up. I'm going to throw right. the first piece of paper. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Throw it. Yes. We're going to see what happens. It's going and down. And they're going to bail us down. all out because we're going to get arrested. Yeah. I got you. Right. I got you. I got you. Well, shout out to Tyrene. Uh, and, and let us know, Tyrene, have you ever encountered a food fight? Let us know in the chat, by the way, which also, guys, we're going to wrap it up here. This is I love these conversations. Thumbs up, share, subscribe to all these great people's uh, channels. Uh, do yourself a favor and show them some love and support. But wrapping up, we're getting some some. <laughs> Y'all want to get a red box? Yeah. That's a <laughs> classic way to end this episode, which I, I haven't gotten a red box, I don't know, in forever. Do they still make that? I think so. They I, was, they I see them at Walgreens. They're, 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 they're the at the grocery store. Yeah. Yeah, say oh, yeah. You know what? That's right. Right by the front door. Yep. Yeah. Who's getting them? That's what I want to know. Who is buying those? Uh, I still the see old people folks, there. I guess. Uh, apparently, this guy is. He's getting, uh, you know, <laughs> he's still <laughs> renting uh, Dolomite. That's what he's getting at the red box. He's getting all those films. Way down in the jungle deep, there he going yeah. to get into those. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That picture you just showed of him reminded me of. Do y'all know who Spice Adams is on social media? Oh yeah, the uh, with Shaq, him and Shaq got a podcast. That'd be uh, man. He was yeah. giving me Spice Adams like that old <laughs> uncle. Like let me. I'm oh, all right. It's like me the when he's behind the the the, the, uh, the tree and he's like. Spot, I know, yeah, I'm yeah, gonna, yeah. He was giving me Spice Adams that whole episode. I just, I love him, I love him so much. He's a yeah, such a great actor. I don't even know if we give him his flowers the way that we should, but we definitely Spice should. Adam. He's a really yeah. great actor, yeah. He he's a uh, ex athlete too. He's played, mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, E with the trivia. All right. I'm trying to I'm trying to find this is the one I this is the first like meme I'm saw from him. Uh and he's hilarious too. You guys should check him out on uh this uh this stream is sponsored by Spice Adams, by the way. Um <laughs> this is the one here that always called me when he's doing that. <laughs> and he'll be like, <laughs> he'll be like <laughs> I, don't, I don't know that was the same dude. That's yeah, and he does yeah. the basketball stuff too, where he's like a terrible basketball player. Right. Uh, he's really like? funny. He is. He is. Shout out to Spice Adams. And, they, and for any basketball fans, him and Shaq have a great podcast every Thursday. Uh, that's hilarious. Uh, but final thoughts, y'all. Be um, Again, uh, this was a throwback episode to me, Brandon. Uh, old school Atlanta, season one and two Atlanta. Uh, very relatable. Probably the most relatable 
TV episode I've seen all year. Uh, just your final thoughts, man. And, and do you expect to get more of a, maybe more extended family for not only um, Earn and Al, but can we get some Darius family Darius. members? Can we get a little right. bit of Vance, Darius, mom man. or dad and stuff like that? Um, I wouldn't be opposed to it, but I wouldn't say it's at my, you know, top of the list of things I want to see. I just want to see a more of what we've been getting uh, with Darius and Van Thon in there. You know, um, I don't care where they go as far as location. Just keep them together. I would like it for it to stay in Atlanta, but, you know, I, I'll take anything I can get. But I love the episode overall so far. Um, it, I mean, this wonderful conversation. I think this is the longest you got you hosted because uh, mm -hmm. there was just so much to talk about. But, um, you know, even... Just, it, I, I was able to, you know, recognize so as as we all are related to our lives, just on Janine and that mindset of uh, her being evil, you know, cutting deep with family members, getting into people's business. Like, why aren't you didn't marry Van and all that unnecessary talk in the car and the cough drops and, you know, all, all of that. You know, um, I loved it. It was a really good episode. One of the best they've had in a while. I agree. Mm -hmm. I agree. Uh, what about you, Tyra? Final thoughts on this episode. Um, me and Elle talked about it earlier. When this show wrap up, we got to probably do like a top 10 Atlanta episodes. I think this is definitely top 10, if not top five. Your thoughts on uh, Light Skinned? I love this episode. Like, I'm glad that they, it's like they kind of slowed down. With each episode, episode, we're learning something absolutely new that we didn't mm -hmm. know about the family before. So that's awesome. Right. But I, uh, I think we are going to have them I don't think we had them deal with anything. Like I see people commenting because I don't think we discussed, you know, the the, the Bobby Schmurder door. Like it was like, mm -hmm. you know, it works. Like if you just go and you don't, it was like a horror movie. Like don't look back because if you don't look, look back, back, Auntie Jean, like she's she gonna see you, she's gonna see you, she's she, she gonna stab, <laughs> she's gonna stab you. Like just, just, it was just almost like kind of ignore it. Like are you gonna ignore this kind of behavior moving forward or are you guys gonna, you know, not look back and deal with it and move differently with each other as a family? I really don't know with how this uh, episode is ended and how their relationship is in general but i really hope that we get more of this like it would like give me my life if we got any any little small history on darius at all like he's such a um, mysterious character mm -hmm. i would love we see i saw his mom and it was like Cree summer from a different world or something if they were just all you know a whole like <laughs> where where all of this zidness and all of this like he's so enlightened in, in all his you know own little ways but I, I love this episode and i can't wait to see what else they have coming I agree. I agree. Um, L, final thoughts uh, as far as this episode goes, and and what do you hope to see next? And by the way, I don't know if have you guys seen the they dropped the trailer for episode five. Have you guys seen that yet? I didn't watch. I haven't seen it. I was thinking about playing it, but I don't want to mess around with FX. I don't want them to pull the stream. Uh, but check it out. It's it's a so to answer my own question. Vans is like it's a van centric episode, and it looks like she's going to okay. be on a sitcom, and it looks like it's like a Tyler Perry uh, oh, situation going on, oh, uh, like a note, a little bit of note too. Journey. It looks good. But anyway, uh, we're going back to you, L. Just your final thoughts, and uh, what do you hope to see moving forward in the rest of the season? Yeah, I thought it was a great episode, very relatable, like we all said, and it was very, um, you know, familiar to what we are used to for Atlanta, and it just always amazes me how you're in Missouri, I'm in New Orleans, you're in Texas, and where you at, Tyra? I'm in Texas. In Texas. Too. You're in te yeah, y'all in Texas. We all had the same childhood. We all came up the same way. We all know, they didn't even have to explain the cough drop to us. We all knew what that meant. They didn't have to explain, you know, the um, liturgical dancing. Like we didn't, it was yeah. no confusion yeah. with that. We knew what that was. And we heard, I heard the song, the battle is not yours. It's the Lord. Oh, we all know that. I already knew it. I already, I already knew. know what it is, yep. right? So yep. I just love that, that it, it has a way of <laughs> not having a focus on points that can bring us together, but doing it just like flawlessly. Um, I want to recommend to anyone who has an Aunt Jeannie in their life, whether it's your mama or your daddy or your cousin or your brother, set a boundaries, my, my love. Set a boundary. You <laughs> old love. and you 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 are an adult and you can respectfully say, Don't play with me like that. Respectfully, you know what I'm saying? So um, but you know, I really enjoyed it and I, I just love how you know Atlanta is very smart in the way that they do things. And it makes you question like what you saw in the episode. Like, I wonder if they had a red hat on for a reason. <laughs> I wonder if that was the guy in the mall, if that was the same person. I wonder if Cat Williams had on that velvet do-rag because it was like for a reason. You know, like, I love that about it because mm -hmm. you never know. It could be a huge point 
or it could literally be nothing at all and just a decision that was made. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what Van is gonna do because Van had me. She was I, she had confused my whole soul last when she was French that time, and I was confused about it. She don't confuse me this go round, <laughs> and hopefully, you know, I'm sure it'll be a great episode because I, you know, I'm I'm glad Atlanta's back in Atlanta and it's the Atlanta that I know. So I'm looking forward. To it. Couldn't have said it better myself. So there you have it. Two hours of family discussions, family dramas, relatability, cough drops, um, you know, uh, and all and everything in between. So uh, this has been awesome, as it always is. I appreciate your L, Tyra, and B. Um, guys, check them out. The links will be in the description of this video. Subscribe, follow them, do it all, because uh, you will not be disappointed. Um, I am excited for tonight. Uh, L, I know we talked about it. We will be going to Westeros. We went to Atlanta. Now we got to go to Westeros a little bit later tonight and i'm hearing l that is something we should be excited for so i'm very excited to be back a little bit later tonight talking about house of the dragon but round table style l starting with you if you want to let the people know again where they can find you and uh what's the next <laughs> bit of content you got lined up for all right y'all so um here's the thing i was supposed to be i was supposed to be recapping the handmaid's tale I forgot about it. It snuck up on me. <laughs> I forgot. I forgot to watch the episode and film the content. But one thing I will not forget is that old House of the Dragon. I'm definitely gonna be in there like swimwear first thing smoking on uh might be Sunday night recording my uh uh my content and dropping my episode. The last uh recap that I did, I had a prop with me. I had a little water gun and I was pointing it at people that I thought it was appropriate that I would have sprayed in the face with some water if they would have been in my vicinity. <laughs> I might bring that back because it, it really was appropriate because people be making me mad in this show. They make poor decisions. But that's what I'm focusing on now. Really excited for Werewolf by Night. Mm. I'm like itching for that thing. I cannot wait yes. for Werewolf <laughs> by Night. Um, also, I might be doing a couple of short, uh, not shorts, but well, maybe shorts because I'm cosplaying as Mr. Knight well, dressing up like Mr. Knight for Halloween this year. And I'm DIYing my costume. I'm very excited about it. Nice. I'm very excited. So I might do a video fully dressed like Mr. Knight. That's how excited I am. It might not have anything to do with Marvel either. So just be on the lookout for that. Dope. Dope. Definitely. Do so yeah, we're with my night. L. Whew. Yeah. Or MCU, come on now, can't get yeah. any better than that. Um, but so thankful, thank you, L. Again, it's always great seeing you again. Hopefully, we can link up tonight and talk about them dragons. It's I'm gonna awesome. be there before you. All right, I'm well, I'm, 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 I look forward to it. <laughs> look forward to it. Tyra, the homie, where can people find you, and when can we expect that uh, that smile review? Oh man. Uh, the Smile Review should be out sometime this week. I have so much to do this week. Uh, be sure that my handle is on screen. Go follow me on Instagram to stay up on the latest of what I'm dropping. Uh, as far as the channel, like I have my Raising Caning Review that should be coming up. The people will not let me let go of these last two Mike Tyson episodes, so I have to talk about them before somebody mentions them again. Uh, my Dahmer mm -hmm. Review for the uh, Dahmer series is up. Ooh. That one's like really, really good. And I will be discussing for throwback, uh, New Jack City is coming up. That is going to be awesome. <laughs> That's yeah. going to be awesome. And then I just had somebody purchase Scream, Blackula Scream, so we can go all the way back with some 70s horror. So it's wow. going to be a good month on the channel. Like, just with all the horror that's coming and me being such a fan, we are going to be real creepy and whatnot on my channel. I'm trying to go dark. We're trying to get into some hereditary and a whole bunch of other Ooh. stuff on the channel. <laughs> yes, yes. And, I, and listen, Tyra, I know... MCU isn't your cup of tea, but I need to know, are you excited for Werewolf by Night? We got some werewolves in the MCU. I always get my hopes up, Elliot. Like, I, uh, I'm hearing they just good. disappoint me every time, you know? I just... Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm going to we'll check see. it out. I'm going to go we'll into see. it with an open mind, because I have just, yeah. like, absolutely threw Marvel away in all forms. Oh. Like, unless it's, like, oh. Guardians of the Galaxy or, you know, somebody I like. I love, you yeah. know, the, the X-Men tie-in, but I'm like, just what exactly are y'all going to do? What y'all going to turn Wolverine into? I don't know. I just, I, I'll keep an open mind, but, you know, I just, I leave it here because I don't want to be disappointed. <laughs> gotcha. I understand. I understand. But I'm I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful. I'm hearing this really good. Uh, and I'm excited to hear your thoughts for it. Oh, yeah. Oh, look, yeah. Where, where, where are you people in this chat? I am like, let me refresh it. Mm -hmm. I have 7,999 people. Please get me to my Let's 8K. Somebody go Let's subscribe it, right now. <laughs> oh, yeah. Let me yeah. put up a, a live count. Um, <laughs> I have 
serious. Like, they will let something sit. Go, I need one more person to go over so the channel can be an AK and I can do a celebratory Bride Yay. of Chucky video. <laughs> Let me pull it up here. Let me pull it up. Oh, man. Yeah, you got to get them even numbers. Because see, them yeah. odd numbers that's really close, it disturbs my spirit. Let that sit there. Do y'all see? On, let's get, like, let's do, let's really? Get, oh, man. Come on now. Come on now. <laughs> yeah. it's, I have it like I'm in the studio. 7,999. Like, y'all playing? Y'all can make this 8,000 right now. Let's do it. Let's do it right now. <laughs> Come on. Come on now. Yeah, hit oh, refresh, Ellie. Hit, hit refresh. Thank refresh, you. Yeah. So, let me refresh it. Thank you. Let me see what it's saying now. By the way, Tyra, that yeah. that uh, there yeah. it is. Yeah. Hey. There it is. There it is. I'm on the channel. Yeah. There it is. I gotta. I wish I had the clip up, my old man. Yeah. There it is. There it is, y'all. Thank y'all so much. Love it. Love it. Love Congrats, it. Congrats, Tyra. That's awesome. Thank you, girl. Thank you so much. It's celebration, cool. ladies and gentlemen. My it's man, awesome. Brandon Keith Avery. Where can the people find you, man? And and also, I know there's a, a show that you host every week that we should be looking forward to tonight. Yeah, but before we talk about the show, uh, just real quick, L and Tyra, I really did enjoy you. Y'all are amazing. And again, Elliot, thank you for inviting me. I do appreciate it. Also, Tyra, congratulations on your AK, ma'am. Thank I'm you. Glad you're a part of that live as, as you cross that milestone and you're about to yes. hit 9 and 10K. Um, yeah. and before I talk about the show, since Tyra doesn't like Marvel, I know that she does uh, <laughs> like DC a bit more. So I'm going to go ahead and make the announcement now. Me and her are going to be cosplaying this year on Halloween for Joker and Harley Quinn. Harley Quinn. So nice. you guys can uh, look for it. No, I'm just playing. We we. I just, I just made it up. Look at I my just... face. I was so excited. <laughs> I was about to let you go with it. Okay. I was, wow. I was going to wait till we got off and be like, now, B, you can't be announcing stuff. You ain't told me ahead of time. Right, I don't right, have right. a costume. I, I, do need to, I do need to cosplay uh, sometime. Uh, I got to get a character, though. Uh, probably Falcon, but we'll, we'll see. Oh, yeah. But um, but yeah, man. Um, uh, movie reviews over my channel. The next thing you can see on my channel is tonight at six p.m. CST. Elliot has it on the screen right here. It's the Movie News Roundup Show yeah. number seventy-eight. We're gonna be talking about a lot of stuff. Like the, besides Marvel, the next title for the Planet of the Apes uh, film. Uh, Finn Jones trying to come back as Iron Fist. Kevin Feige talking about. Uh, Scarlet Witch coming back in the MCU, Harrison Ford coming in the MCU as well. The Black Panther runtime, Blade losing his director, recasting T'Challa, you know, uh, Armor Wars, and also Wolverine coming into um, Deadpool 3 as well. And so that's going to be uh, that's going to be tonight, 6 p.m. CST. And uh, tomorrow, Tuesday, I'm going to go ahead and start talking about the uh, Dahmer. Netflix series as well Ooh, okay. and what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna recap two episodes at a time so make a video for episodes one and two then one for uh three and four five and six you know and so uh that's what I'm gonna do uh if y'all have seen it if you're on the panel and you want to be a part of that let me know and we can definitely set something up um but also besides the Dahmer they're also coming out with another Netflix documentary about uh, Jeffrey Dahmer as well Mm -hmm. But it's going to be releasing some unseen or unheard audio tapes of mm -hmm. the interrogation. And I'm like halfway through the first episode of that. And so that'll be dropping later on this month. Um, other than that, you know, I'm just going to be talking about Atlanta episode five. Also Rings of Power episode eight later on this week. And I just dropped my power uh, Raising Canaan season two, episode seven. And no love lost this past uh this that came out at midnight a couple of hours ago. Very good episode. So make sure you subscribe. You know, Tara just passed AK or she just got to AK. I'm trying to get to freaking 40k. I mean, yeah. I'm trying to get to 50k by the end of the year. I'm gonna hit 50k by the end of the year. I have a plan that I'm gonna do it, but y'all, I just got a few hundred to get to before I'm at 40k. And so if you're watching right now, all 50 of you people. Go on, head over to the channel. Just my opinion reviews right here. Hit that subscribe button. Yes, sir. And on the family, man. We'll have a lot of fun together. Yes, sir. Yes, Shout sir. Shout out yeah. to the three people who got me to my over 8,000. Do y'all want some from the stove? I'm going to the cone stove. Thank y'all. So <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. 
<laughs> listen, I, I am. Uh, say it just not be you name like twelve things you doing. Hey, oh, this yeah. man is always hey. working. No, it's Martin putting that work. So. Golly, are you sleeping, my dude? You drinking hey, water? No. Yeah, yeah. My man <laughs> is like, uh, you know, get the camera, Jeff. Get the camera. He's all, <laughs> my man. He's always on the camera, man. He's getting that work. Yeah, I can't like, wait to hear another one. Anybody really, I'm, who I'm, enjoys I'm, uh, what B has to say about Dharma, just know that I had to push him severely into even checking out Dharma. So yeah. shout out to Tyler. That. Yes, yes, shout out to Tyler. <laughs> but no, like I, I really I'm really trying to do this full time. Um, you know, hopefully within the next six months to a year. So yes, I'm really sir. trying to I'm really about to step it up and, and start pushing more content out so I that can be uh realistic. Oh yeah. Oh, I'm gonna coming. have to get a it's consultation coming. with you then because I don't know what the hell I'm doing still to this day. Okay, so I'm gonna have to get a consult with you. I said you know, a couple we weeks ago, like you and Tyra are feet, killing it. Um, we need like a monthly, a monthly like, round table. Yeah, like round table of you know what we're doing to help our platforms grow. Because I go. have people, you know, ask me questions and stuff all the time, and now one person says the same thing. Something mm -hmm. works for you know one person differently, so that would be awesome. Yeah, Let's do it. I'm with okay, that. Yeah. Let's do that because I again, she winging it out here. I'm just out here skating without a stick, trying You're to doing figure your it out. damn thing though. You're doing your damn thing. <laughs> Well, again, guys, for myself, L, Tyra, and B, uh, as far as here, I'll see you guys later tonight. You know, we got our watch long, 745. Uh, we got our after show uh, shortly after that. So I hope to see you all there to talk about these Targaryens and their crazy ways. But uh, outside of that, again, for myself, L, Tyra, and Brandon, you all have been awesome. Don't forget to like before you head out. Don't forget to subscribe to all these content creators and stay safe and uh, go get yourself a red box and uh, <laughs> a box and a like nice little thing with cough it. drops. Yeah, nice go get some cough drops out there. Congratulations, Elliot. He just passed 39K as well. So he's at 39. Oh, thank you. Thank you, guys. Thank Congrats, Elliot. You. Thank you, guys. Well, you guys have a good rest of your Sunday and uh, we'll catch you guys on the next one. Take care, everyone.